Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. I can't hear Elizabeth. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Lord Jesus. Lord, Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forever, Lord Jesus Christ, forever, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, our King. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ forever. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Woohoo. It's good to be alive in Christ Jesus. <laughs> in him is life and life to the full. More abundantly beyond all that adjectives could describe, in him is life. And Father, we thank you so much for this life that we now live. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ha, you can be seated. We're, we're happy that every one of you are here. We've been going after it and uh, believing God for breakthroughs. And, you know, um, reality of it is, if you're going to put the press on to see those things which Christ Jesus described in His Word accomplished in and through your life, you're going to face yourself some serious interference. So you might as well go ahead and get ready for it. 
It, and listen, we used to sing a song when we were little, and it says, um, run if you want to, run if you will, I'm come here to stay. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room, okay? <laughs> and Father has given us, Father, let's think about this. Father has given us more ability than we've ever even begun to consider for a minute. I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. I am not could even say a second. And the only way you can really begin to consider all that Father has made available to us is when you sit in the presence of the Lord and you're taught by Him because you're willing and ready to receive. Because there's no other way to receive these things. No other way to know these things. All this is revealed to us by the Holy Ghost and by Him alone. Men can't figure it out. You can read about how that Jesus was born in the city of David in a town called Bethlehem of Judea. You can read about how His mother was Mary and you can read about how that the Holy Ghost came upon Mary, overshadowed her, and that holy thing that was conceived in her is called the Son of God. You can read about it and understand it through the, through the lenses of Christmas. You can understand and read about the crucifixion and the resurrection and try to understand that through the, through the lens of the Lord help us, Easter, which should be Passover, uh, Resurrection Day, I mean. But only the Holy Spirit can come and, and show us what these things really mean. I'm always amazed at... How people know more than God. I mean, this is amazing. How the people tell me all these things about Jesus, and he didn't know anything about that. How these people tell me all these things about what God is doing, what God wants to do, and what they're allowed to do, and God, and God don't know anything about it. Yes, they know more than he does, and they've only been alive. Many of these folks, only, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. God has come and testified concerning of His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Father has come and revealed Himself, and He alone knows who He is. And He's come and revealed Himself through His Word. And all the ideas and all the philosophies and all the religious ideologies are not going to contain or isolate that which He purposed to do in the earth. God said it like this. He said, as many as received Him, nothing else. As John came and testified, and boy, he stepped into it. He, I mean, you know, he stepped into the realms of glory in such a way where he said, Our eyes have seen, our hands have handled the word of life. That eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, which we've looked upon, <laughs> which our hands have handled of the word of life. I mean, he stepped into a realm in Christ Jesus where he was baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. He stepped into a realm in Christ Jesus where he could now proclaim on a level that no one else could proclaim. You know, Matthew talks about Jesus as king, and he is indeed. He's king. And he's not going to be the king in the future. He's king right now. Right now, people are voluntarily coming into the kingdom just simple by a simple request. God regards not man's sin and iniquity has made a way through the blood of Jesus Christ through a mercy that he has provided for all, propitiation that he's made available to every single person. The ability to come in regardless of how evil or how good you've been. Because even the stars are impure before him. As uh, Bill Dad said to Job, listen, I'll tell you right now, you may not understand this, but the whole, the whole doctrine of Job is really good. It just, most of it's misapplied. And listen to Job, he would say over and again, hey, listen, I know as much as you guys, you guys aren't telling me something I don't know. It's a very good indicator of how good their doctrine is. And, and I'm going to get into a little bit about that here just a little bit because I want to show you the, the champion of faith, Job, as he st stands in, in, in chapter 23 in the midst of great affliction, in the midst of everybody who had any word to say and as an influential person in his day and time coming and ri ridiculing him and, and trying to uh, uh, you know, put upon him something that didn't belong to him. Just, I want you to just hold on to that thought for just a moment because I'm going to get to it here in a few moments. Okay, and, But listen, Papa has made a way for you and I to come in and begin to participate with the same anointing that John received from the Lord Jesus when he said, with invitation, speaking on his behalf and, and revealing him who he, as he is, God indeed. See, Matthew says he's king, and he is. Mark says he's servant, no genealogy are reckoned unto him. Luke says he's the man, Christ Jesus, and there his genealogies are reckoned from Mary instead of uh, 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 back to Dave, Nathan, the son of David, instead of Joseph, his, who was not his father, but just his overseer, 
you know, the place that just Joseph had the honor of, you know, taking, as it were, the role of, the, of heavenly father, while Jesus is a little baby, it, you know, this is amazing. And then John comes along and declares him as God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the same was God in the beginning. All things were created by him, without him was nothing made that was made. He is, in him is the life, and the life is the light of men. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God, the eternal God. And now he says to us, come and abide. Come dwell in me. And so the Lord says, John opens up this wonderful message and he says, as many as receive him. He gives to them authority to be sons. Now I'm going to tell you, they're sending it constantly going on, trying to mess with your confidence. You have circumstances, situations, mess with your confidence. You have all kinds of things intimidating you, trying to stop you, threaten you. Fear kind of come, try to come overwhelm you. You know, all of a sudden, there you are in the Holy Ghost meeting. Power of God comes on. You get to faith, touches you, and you start, stuff starts coming out of your mouth you can't even believe you're saying. Right? And then, then the next morning you wake up, and now what you think is reality, in other words, the circumstances that oppose you are all around you. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to believe what circumstance says? Are you going to believe what men say? Are you going to believe what you think, what you've logically and rationally uh, have have concluded about yourself because you know from the very from very uh, the very beginning of your life limitations have been imposed upon you and then you know those limitations that you discovered on your own begin to be magnified even in a greater way you know because people around you had all kinds of uh, bad things to say to you probably more than they had good things to say to you there's a lot of people in your life that have certainly told you you can't do it it won't work. There have been many opportunities for you to try and fail. How many of you failed? How many of you, you know, really deal with failure really well? You just, you just, get failure is just no problem. You know, it's easy come, easy go, whatever. No one deals with failure. It, it well, it always imposes upon you uh, a limitation. It tries to redefine you. You know, be, before you failed, you thought, I can do anything or I can do this. And then you failed and then you, your conclusion was, I cannot do this. Let me go try something else. And sometimes that has no end to it. Your whole life becomes a series of failures. And now all what's happening is your life is being dictated to you by the fr in the framework of your own human ability. It's in the framework of, of what other people say about you and what circumstances impose upon you. And that's your enemies. Now, if I could begin to minister to you this morning by the Spirit of the Lord in such a way that you had received by the Spirit of the Lord... You had come to understand what the shield of faith is all about. That, so that by it, all of these things that will oppose you, that would try to stop you from moving into that realms that God has given to us, as many as, as, many as received him, I, I would ask you, have you received Jesus? And that was a very weak uh, mm, grump and grumble. And that, mm, mm. It sounded like somebody was throwing, clearing their throat, actually. Have you received Jesus? I'm gonna, this isn't rhetorical. Yeah, you received Christ Jesus. He's yours. Now, listen, as newborn babes, you're supposed to do what? Desire the sincere milk of the word so that you can do what? Mature. Grow into what? Grow into all the fullness of God. Why stop along the way in Christian philosophy and ideology? Why stop along the way and, be in, 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 and accommodate things that are contrary to the word of the Lord and to the ways of Jesus Christ? He said, as many as received him, he gave them authority. What kind of authority? Authority to be sons of God. Now, to begin to define sons of God. Because you cannot define sons of God outside of the Son of God, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came and displayed to us what Father has for us. Who we're supposed to be. What we're supposed to look like. Our identity is supposed to be him, in Him. Our life is supposed to be in Him. Our faith should be that we no longer live. It's Christ Jesus that lives. But look at all the things that want to strip you of your confidence. People tell you to sit down and shut up. You can't do this. Who do you think you are? You're not Reinhard Bunky. You're not this one. You're not that one. Wait a minute. Hold up. Stop. What are you going to believe? The circumstances around you would tell you you can make just so much money and that's all. And you get up in the morning and you go to work and don't you say nothing and don't you complain and don't you grumble. And you work eight to ten hours for me and then if you have any time maybe I'll allow you to read the Bible 15 minutes and pray for five. How long are you going to live under that atmosphere? How long do you live under that circumstance of life? How do you long do you live under those cares of life? Huh? How long do you get how long will you continue to be dictated to by the affairs of this life? <laughs> Listen, you don't want to be entangled anymore. 
do you want to begin to be profit from the Word of God? Those things that Paul said to us aren't just little nice little stories or things to consider that would be nice to have in our life. He said, set your affections on things above, not on things of this world. Don't you realize you begin the authority to represent the living God? He's giving you the authority to be sons of God. And Satan, is, Satan works overtime to make sure that you do not succeed. Has anybody ever had anybody in their life that worked overtime against you to make sure you couldn't succeed? Anybody? Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not strange. Every one of you would raise your hands, the rest of you in denial. But nonetheless, that's going on all the time. And everybody who is the servant of Satan and everybody who's caught up in the realms of darkness, they do that. They're going to, if you realized everybody that talked bad about, uh, talked bad about you or talked against you, and that really made the difference of whether they were going to be your friend, very few people would have any friends. Look around you right now. And just, just demand people not talk bad about you anymore. Why? Because the, there, there is an accuser. There is a prince in the power of the air who has power over the atmosphere. There is a power of darkness that has a pseudo-sovereign authority in the realm of his dominion. That man abdicated at one point, Adam, and gave over to the satanic realm. Which Jesus Christ has absolutely, totally demolished all of his authority and all of his power so if we step over into the realms of his kingdom satan has no right to access us no right to touch us no right to hinder us no right to stop us no right to keep us back from everything the father has given to us an authority to function in and move in but that's hard to understand and that's why i said that the Holy Spirit would give you wisdom because what's going to happen is all of the earthly wisdom, all the sensual knowledge, all the things that belong to your experiences are going to kick in and try to stop the reality of what I'm telling you to ever take root into your, into your spirit, into your determination to be convinced in your heart of these things. These things are never going to happen in your life. I've watched men uh, come into the kingdom and, as young men and grow old and never get it. We watch it now as, you know, as I listen to one preacher, and I couldn't even believe it. So it's publicized, so I'll just go ahead and say it. I mean, it sounds like slander, but he, he came out on, in, in public on, you know, on the news media and said it himself that, you know, uh, Pastor, Pastor Judas Smith says he's learned faith from Justin Bieber. That's where everything is going. The world is going into complete conformity. The church is going rather into complete conformity to the world. They, the church wants to be relevant and forgot that Jesus said you're irrelevant and you always will be. The world cannot know you. That, in other words, that is extreme irrelevance. Hello. The world is looking for a light, not some more darkness to come and, and, and add to the darkness. Come on now, people, listen to me. I'm, tr I'm crying out by the Spirit of the Lord trying to get somebody to recognize that God's given more than one or two or three or four people authority to be his sons. Amen. Authority to function in the ministry of Jesus. Listen, I praise God for everything that has happened. I praise God for all the ministry and all the things that people are doing in, in ministry. Praise God for it. But reality of it is, you listen to me. The ministry that Jesus Christ himself demonstrated and called us to step into is not being realized, not fully realized. Over and over again, they all, gee, all that came to Jesus, great crowds, multitudes that came to Jesus, he healed them all, it said repetitively throughout the Gospel of Matthew. And then the characteristic of Scripture makes that commonplace of the ministry of Jesus. When something in Matthew is said eight times and he healed them all, that is a commonplace because I'm telling you right now, the Scripture, the Gospels are just snapshots of very important features in the ministry of Jesus. It is not all comprehensive and, 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 and have everything that he did he said John said I suppose that not even huh, uh, the world could contain all the testimonies all the books that should be written but what about what right now what I mean you know, I'm getting ready to publish my translation of the four Gospels and I'm going to go ahead and put the book of Acts in it because it has to be there Listen, everybody knows that it just really, the excitement of the fun begins in the book of Acts. Come on now. Everybody knows that the excitement of the fun is in the fact that the God sent, gave to us not only His only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, as our Savior, but the Holy Spirit as our comforter, our leader, our guide to come fill us, be with us, and be, uh, and be inside of us forever. 
all the days of our life on this earth right now. And the Word of God is teaching us how to function in that which He wants to do through our lives. We've got to give Him control. We've got to give Him complete control. That is a hard thing to do. People have too much of a boat of confidence in the flesh. Paul said we have no confidence in the flesh. We don't trust in circumcision or uncircumcision. It does not matter. It profits nothing. There is a new man, a new creation where Christ Jesus is formed within us, is reproduced within our life by the Spirit which He gives to us. Now, people, this, this, we're going to have to be willing to stop here for a minute, receive the life of Christ Jesus, and now let Him live. And quit listening to all this nonsense. People come around and say, oh, Jesus said this, Jesus said that. You say nothing like that. Oh, I'm, Jesus was just a prophet. He said he was almighty God. He said, I am the great I am. That's who he is. Yeah. Hallelujah. He proclaimed himself the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yeah. The redeemer of all mankind. That there is no way unto the Father but by him. That's what Jesus said. We want to talk about, oh, they want to try to talk good about Jesus like they talk good about Gandhi. You can't put them in the same category. And it's time that God's people quit functioning under a gag order and stand up with the authority of the kingdom of God, recognize that they've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear Son. Christ Jesus is king now as much as he will be forever. He is. Now we're going to have to get some spiritual eyes so we can see. You know, I'm telling you right now, I'm reaching into an anointing in God as Elisha had. So that I could pray one prayer. God, open up the eyes of your servant that he may see what's going on here. Because what's going on here right now is we're seeing far too many that are against us. And we think, how are we going to ever be successful here? When Father is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, he's coming for a glorious church. He, Father has long patience waiting until he received the precious fruit of the earth. We know exactly what that is. It's the manifested sons of God. Those people, his church, walking into the Divine power and glory, something that is not relegated to a generation. It's been available since the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the church 2,000 years ago. And there's been a lot of hindrance. And there's been a lot of opposition. And most men cowardly retreat. Most men cowardly retreat. They've not learned how to take hold of the shield of faith. If you could just learn, if you could just grab a hold, above all, taking unto yourself. The shield of faith. Oh, when you want to just want to put it all into the realms of temptation, having to deal with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. There's much bigger things at stake here. There's much bigger things going on than playing around with making a decision of whether you are a servant of hell, a servant of sin, co co-inhabitors with demons. Or a citizen of the kingdom of God whose conversation is heaven who has taken upon themselves the very life and identity of Jesus Christ. Filled with the spirit of the living God. Walking in the spirit. Living by the spirit. Whose conversation is ordered in heaven. Conduct of life is there established. Listen to me now. Listen to me. God wants to give you a great confidence that has a... Don't. You know, you've got to be careful. Because people are beginning to move in faith. They'll begin to step out. And they cast away their confidence. Be careful. You can sit in a living room, talk about your problems, and abdicate from your authority. You listen to me. Because see, these things manifest itself. What, what, what you allow, you, maybe unknowingly, you don't even know it. You don't even realize it. You don't even know that your mouth is getting you in trouble. That Jesus said, by every man's mouth, he's justified. Or by every man's mouth, he is condemned. You've got to understand that he says that every nonsense word you will give an account for how much more you sit around and talk about your problems and pour out your issues within the context of what your understanding would dictate. And all of a sudden, you're coming in bondage to those things which you declared. Because when it comes out of your mouth and you agree with it, you might not know it, but your brain, your mind, your thinking plays tricks upon you and it will seize your attitude. It will seize your disposition. It will convince your heart of something. And then when your heart is convinced of something, you're going to live that out. Listen to me. Father wants your heart to be convinced of what he has said, what he's spoken, what he's declared from his son. In these last days, he's spoken to us from his son, from heaven. In times past, he spoke to us by the prophets. But in these last days... He's spoken to us. He's declared something to us. He's speaking to us right now by his son from heaven. 
by whom he created all things. I want you to turn to your scriptures and the word of God. I want you to just look at that with me for just a minute. In, in Hebrews chapter 1. I'm not so much interested in a manifestation of how God the Holy Ghost is touching me. I'm interested in a manifestation of how God's touching people around me. Huh? I'm interested in seeing demon spirits go out in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus' ministry, demon spirits went out and then and joy came and peace and life came. Jesus' ministry. The blind saw, the mute spoke, the deaf heard, the crippled walked. The diseased were cured, the dead were raised to life again. If you are not passionately going after seeing the dead raised to life again, somewhere you've lost your confidence, you've cast it away. And you can't cast away some little part of your confidence and it not have a ripple effect or a domino effect throughout the whole of your confidence. And I'm talking, I'm talking crazy talk to a modern day church. I'm talking about something that belonged to 2,000 years ago. I tell you it belongs to the future. I'm telling you Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And that's, just, that's more than sin. It includes sickness. It includes disease. It includes every kind of poverty and torment. Everything that belongs to to the power and the law of sin and death, Jesus was manifested to destroy it. Hallelujah. How many people cast away their confidence? Huh? You know how many people I prayed for to be raised from the dead? I prayed for many people to be raised from the dead, and uh, nobody was fully raised from the dead. I mean, I mean, I prayed for people on their deathbed, and they were healed. But I've never prayed for anyone who was dead, and then they came back to life again, so far as I know. There's, I, I have people run me down and tell me about the miracle that took place in the meeting. I mean, I'm, I didn't know anything about it. Jesus did all that anyways. But, you know, as far as I know. But is that, am I going to let the fact that I stood over top of people commanding them get out of the bed stop me? I'm not because I'm not living by my own dictates. I have no confidence in my own human ability. It's not about me. It's not about my image. I received him, and in receiving him, I received authority to be the, his representative. Not a kind of representative, but the representative to do his works and greater works than these. To do what he said. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name that cast out devils. It's time God's people get into a place. You're not going to do it unless you have confidence and boldness because you re you've recognized you've been convinced your heart has been convinced that you have divine power and authority come on now we want to just sit around and write songs about how mountains are going to be moved out of the way and make them some kind of allegory jesus wasn't making no allegory <laughs> we want to make songs about how how a sycamine tree is plucked up by the roots and planted in the water and uh, in, the, in the sea and nothing shall uh, be able to, to resist that which we say and then not do it. Just sit around and sing, get, get clap happy. Come on, people. Let me go ahead and get intense for just a minute. Let me go ahead and kick this thing in to gear. Let me, let me knock you right out of your circumstance. Let me get, at you, get you out of your identity. Oh, who are you? Oh, well, I'm a mechanic. Oh, I'm a doctor of this. Oh, I'm a lawyer of that. Oh, I'm a high-minded and whatever else. I mean, get, forget, forget about what all the world says about who you are. Oh, I'm a secretary. Oh, I'm a dentist. Oh, I'm a this. Oh, I'm a that. Get your identity out of that mess. How about when somebody comes up and says, who are you? And all of a sudden you begin to say, I'm a representative of Jesus Christ, given the authority of the kingdom of God. And that's better than saying I've got a PhD, an MD. I've been doing medical research in the greatest subject and the most, convinced, and the most difficult um, you know, problem that belongs to the universe. <sighs> Whatever. Are you listening to me? Watch out for the pride of life. It's the most subtle of all Satan's tricks. Who are you? I mean, think about who you are. I think some people, I think some people can almost categorize saying that they're a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, a messenger of the kingdom of God, with being a garbage man or somebody who just released from the mental institution. Because that's what the sprints and the power of the air imposes upon us. Huh, you need to get yourself a shield of faith. Ha ha, boss to Kerenea Pai. I'm Bradea. Even in this, even in the church, modern day church, manifestation of the Spirit, by and large, it, you know, it's try, if people are trying to cut it short. Oh, don't, 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 don
you know, understand the resurrection of the dead out of their own human ability and out of their own human understanding, that they're going to understand that they no longer live, Christ lives, that they've been crucified with Christ, that they've been buried with, by baptism into his death, that, they, that, that they've been raised up together with him, that they're alive together with him, that they're seated together with him in the heavenly realm. You think that people are going to understand that out of the natural understanding? No, they just sit around and look like a cow staring at a new gate. It's about time we start believing what God has said and start declaring it and start living it and laying hold upon it and understand how to grab a hold above all things to take a hold of the shield of faith according to Ephesians 6, 16 and quench every fiery dart of the wicked one who wants to stop you from moving forward in the ministry of Jesus, from moving forward in signs and wonders and miracles, from moving forward in the demonstration of the authority of a son of God to preach this gospel of the kingdom. I'm just and I'm gonna cast the devil out of you today. Amen. By the help and the grace of God, I'm gonna cast the devil out of every person who's given place to demon spirits in this place. I I, I am so sick and tired of the satanic realm running in interference with the word of God, the character of God, the nature of God, the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. All people are interested is in food and reproduction. Give me a break. Are you listening to me? Can you hear some tension? <laughs> There's far more to your life than food, clothing, and reproduction. And about the best thing in that's reproduction. That's the one that the Lord said to be involved in. Food and clothes, he said, don't concern yourself with it. Concern yourself rather with the authority that I've given you, with the purposes of the kingdom of God. You want to say, hey, see, you want to sit around saying, sing, seek ye first the kingdom of God? Ho hold up. Do you even know what you're saying? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're talking about the ministry of Jesus. We're talking about the ministry of Christ the Lord. We're, we're, we're not talking about some kind of subordinate kind of, you know, religious activity in our life that, that, that's a part of just a demonstration of a modern uh, religious system. We're talking about co-inheritors with Jesus, co-heirs with him. God, listen to me. I t I'm talking to you. We're talking about co-heirs with Jesus. We're talking about heirs of the Father, not later, now. So what is it that you, what is more important to you than being co-inherited with Jesus? Tell me. I'd like to just interview you right now. Let me get my mic. What's more important to you than being co-inherited with Jesus Christ, heir with God? Oh, well, that's going to come later, brother. No, it's now, brother. Why don't people like it? Because all of a sudden it places responsibility on them to get out of the world. It places it now. All of a sudden, reality comes to beckon. Truth comes to call upon you. Who, who are you really living for? What is it that you're really doing? Listen, don't build up confidence. And somebody said, I just want to, you know, this and that and the other thing. Good. Get out of the world. Get out of the worldly system. Because if you're going to stay in the world and the worldly system, you're going to be complaining. You're going to be talking bad about other people all the time. You're going to be talking about how you got cut short and how people don't like you. and Everybody's against you. You're going to find yourself constantly living as an outcast in your own kingdom. Can you imagine that? You're an outcast in your own kingdom. Are you listening to me? What if what would happen today if you would decide you no longer live by anything except for the dictates of what God Himself has spoken? Everything would begin to change in your life, but you would be faced with the most difficult, stressful challenges you've ever come to confront. You found a comfortable place to live. You've got yourself a job with a salary and a retirement plan and an insurance policy. Huh? You listen to me. In the world system, men think about you and value you based upon primarily your money, what you do with your money, how quickly you pay, all those things. Because money is important to man. It's important to you. You like people if they give you money. You don't like them if they don't give you money. Huh? 
You've been abused if you get paid on time. Don't get paid on time. People, you know, are good to you if you do get paid on time. It's just the whole relationship program. Feelings and attitudes centered around this stronghold that you need to understand how to deal more effectively with. And that's just one of thousands of things that we've given preeminence to in our life, that we've made masters in our life. If, I could, if, if you could just be willing to receive direction from the Holy Ghost and let Him give you insight to the things that you've made lords over your life, masters over your life, as it were, dictators, rulers, gods over your life. There's only, one part, there's only one way that you can live free of the influence of the powers of darkness. And that is to come under the rule of God's word. And thus walk in the spirit. Be led by the spirit. Continually filled with the spirit. Then all of a sudden you're going to understand why it's absolutely essential. That you forgive everybody all the time. And you treat everybody as though they never did anything wrong or did anything against you. As though they've always been, you know, this the best friend. You treat everybody in, in such a way uh, uh, that, that this, this love of God would compel you to treat them. Jesus said, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Huh? Then Jesus didn't say, do unto others as they've done to you. But well, hold up, hold up. Don't laugh too hard because that's kind of like, if we started preaching the gospel the way that we live it, everybody would know that's wrong. I'm not going back to that church. They preach false doctrine. What's more important, to live false doctrine or to preach false doctrine? Which is worse? Which is worse? Which is worse? Both are bad, but I would say that living false doctrine is the worst of all because the light is, that is in you is darkness. So how great is that darkness? I say you better get, I, bet, I say you better kick it in. I say, you, I, I'm telling you right now, hell's worth missing. I'm telling you right now, I believe in an eternity without God. I believe in a place where Satan and all of the powers of darkness and everyone who is unwilling to learn the ways of God and be taught the ways of God are forever in a place called hell, called torment, and a lake of fire where no one dies and the smoke of their torment ascends up before his throne forever. Somebody said, I don't believe in that. Well, you know more than God does. You know more than Jesus did. You're amazing. You're brilliant. Wow. Hope that works out for you. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I know it won't work out for you, and I'm going to retract the statement. I'm not hoping nothing. I'm hoping rather you repent. I'm hoping that you change. People sit defiantly against God. Is there there's someone, so, there's someone, there's, there's, there's someone that, that really matters? Give me a break, people. God in His love and His mercy condescended to become our servant, our slave, to bear our sins in His own body. Are you going to sit around and stare at Him? No, sir. No. Listen, it's time to bow the knee. It's time, it's time to bow the knee. <laughs> it's, it's time to begin to confess Christ Jesus in a way that doesn't bring dishonor to His name. In Jesus' name. I, I, I am going, by the help and the grace of God, I'm going to participate with the Holy Ghost and see raised up in this place people who are going to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ who know challenge is too great for them. I, I'm going to see people raised up in the realms of the Holy Ghost that it doesn't matter what the situation that they confront, whether it's uh, the need of $10 million to take a nation through a mass evangelism crusade, or if it's raising the dead to life again, they're so bold, they're so confident. They're, there is a place in their life where they are, uh, they have been, their heart has been convinced of those things which God has said. And they've gone through whatever it is that you've got to go through, whatever challenges you've got to go through, and you come out on the other side and recognize if you don't cast away your confidence, there is a great, there is a great payday. You know, it says in Isurabah. Hebrews 10.35 says it's a great recompense of reward. I think that's how King James said it, right? There's a great recompense of reward. There is a great, there is a great payday. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> See, if you don't weary in well doing, you shall you shall para. You, you shall reap, hallelujah, if you don't faint, hallelujah. It, listen to me. If you're willing to understand, to come to recognize that God would train us to live by his word, even though he takes you by a hard, direct, a hard way through the wilderness. Say, wait a minute, there's an easier shortcut. I know, I know. I'm, my grandfather used to live out here. I mean, my great-grandfather, and it's been passed down to generations. There's a shortcut. And the Lord says, no, 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 we're going to take you a hard way. We can take you around the long way so that you can understand that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You're never going to be able to come and step into a place where this authority that Father has for us can be fully realized in your life so that you can bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus Christ instead of profane his name. You don't think, listen, stop for a second. You don't think Father is devoted to glorifying the name of his only begotten Son? You don't think Father is, is absolutely radically opposed to all that has profaned the name of Jesus and trashed the name of Jesus and made Jesus' name a byword and a word, to, you know, to, to use for cursing and, and slander? You know what? When, when the name of the authority of God became a byword and a word of slander, it was only a declaration that God's people had been taken prisoner and gone into captivity and that the, that the kings of the nations, that the Philistines or the uh, Babylonians or the Assyrians were reigning over them. Their, their oppressors reigned over them. Could it be possible that the church has abdicated its authority right now and the oppressor is, absolute, is reigning over us? is stopping us, is limiting us, has authority to say you can go just so far and you can't go any further, I'm going to chop his hand off, man. I'm going to kick his knees out from underneath him, not by the strength of man, but by the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. When is somebody going to stand up and get, and get radical? Huh? And the other day, little uh, J uh, Josiah's rabbit died, and, uh, or Jake's rabbit died, and, 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 and they went through the rabbit in the trash, and... And Josiah comes walking in, says, the problem around here is nobody believes. <laughs> and he went and pulled the rabbit out of the trash can and started commanding it to live. Come on, man. I don't want it that. And I, listen, I hope he never casts his confidence away. What is he, tw what is he, 11? He's 10, he's 10. 20 minutes in the rain. 10, it was Jacob. 10 minutes in the rain, standing, screaming, command that rabbit to live again. I pray that his confidence is never cast away. I pray, the rabbit did not live. The rabbit did not come to life again. But I'm just so happy that the little guy, 10 years old, was standing in the rain, 10 minutes, screaming and hollering, commanding in the name of Jesus Christ, that rabbit to live again. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that be, and there will be, because he, they're on their way back here, there'll be people around them constantly nurturing that and saying, do not let up. I don't care what anybody says to you, and especially Satan. And there's nobody more powerful and more influential in your life Huh? Listen to me. Listen to me. There's no more one more powerful and influential in your life in this world than Satan. You listen to me. You don't have to get out the world. You don't have to come out the world where he cannot touch you or have access to you. There is a place of consecration. God has brought us into a place. He says, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Come on now, listen to me. Be not conformed to this world, but be transfigured by thinking different about yourself. Hallelujah. Hey, I just want to leave it to renewing of your mind. Why are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? Renewing of you. Just explain that to me. Define that to me in a practical way that you apply yourself every day to doing that. Huh? I tell you what it is. It's thinking different about yourself. It's thinking in, con in, in, in concordant, in agreement with Rather, what God has declared concerning us. Hallelujah. People want to try to set you back into a corner and say, you know, you're going to be just this anointed and, that, and that's it. And you've got to sit down and shut up and listen to us. You're just a work, worker in the house. And if you keep sweeping the floor, maybe after 15, 20 years, maybe you'll be somebody in God. That's nonsense. Tell me where that verse of Scripture is. Huh? The Lord wants us from the very first, from the very first moment that we give our life 
over to him at the very moment that we receive him. We receive an authority. We receive the greatest authority that has ever been. Uh, listen to me. It's a grotto to sedia. It is an authority that goes beyond anything that you could possibly think that you could be or do or accomplish in this world. It would be good for a man to be a total failure at everything. Then to turn his life over to the Lord and say, I have no confidence. I'm a failure at everything. I just give whatever I am, I give it over to you. And then now they let God, the Holy Ghost, take full control. Instead of walking around in the pride of their heart, in the, in the, in the, in the, you know, in the, in the deception of a world created by demons and men. Thinking that there's somebody doing it their own way after their own fashion. While all the time, the glory and the power of God is left by the wayside. Now, the mantle's never picked up. Can you imagine what would have happened if Elijah would have dropped the mantle and Elisha just, just said, you know what, I'm going to go back. Yeah, well, you know, I appreciate that. Thanks for caring. Thanks for being a man of your word and, and leaving the mantle. But you know what, I, I just decided I don't want to go through all that. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the oxen. And I'm going to go buy myself 12, yoke, go buy myself 12 more yoke of oxen. Huh? <laughs> how, how many think that, that would just been a wonderful thing for him to do? You just everybody would have just been so proud of Elisha. Just you can really relate to him, can't you? Can't you? Can't you? How many of you went? How many of you started following Jesus and we went back to fishing? How huh, you went back to fishing? And 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 what would have what would have happened if Jesus would have said, "Children, have you any meat?" And they said, "No." We're going to go, but we're, we're going to go, we, got an, we know another spot we can go fishing. We'll be back later. And they would have just sailed off across the Sea of Galilee and left Jesus standing on the shore. You get, everybody can relate to that, feel real good about that. Uh, you really get, get encouraged through that. Huh? You mean, can I go ahead and rewrite the Bible for you? Can I go ahead and try to sit, you, sit your circumstances, what you've chose, what we have chose, the decisions that we have made, can we go ahead and put those in the Bible? Can we go ahead and put those in the Bible and everybody get encouraged by them? Have we taken up the mantle? Have we come and followed Jesus even though we slipped and, and we went back fishing after the resurrection? We just said, wait a minute, that's the master he's calling. We're going to go with him. We're forsaking everything. Follow him. Take him up. Taking up the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ to function in the realm of sonship. Do you realize to function in the realm of sonship, you're going to have to deny yourself and take up the cross? In other words, that you're going to have to be willing to recognize this one thing. You cannot live to do your own will anymore. You have to live to do the will of the Father. It's another realm. People don't want to hear this because every, we, we are fast approaching the, the absolute state of apostasy where everything is being set up for the man of sin, the Antichrist, the one who works iniquity be revealed. And so this is the last day where the things that God has described in his word and declared that we should be doing is being, is being rejected and being refused. And people are going and flocking by the thousands and the tens of thousands to teachers having itching ears. Hearing doctrines of devils, seducing doctrines that make you believe that you're right when you're not doing a single thing that God told us to do. When we're not living the life of Jesus Christ, even in an imaginative way. Where there's more of the world in our life than there is, far more of the world in our life than there is heaven in our life. Far more of a display of the affections of these things of this, of this world and of this earth than there is a conversation and declaration and description that you just came around of the realms of heaven. There's far more complaint and murmuring and, and backbiting and bickering and strife and envy than there is a display of God's love and mercy and forgiveness and joy and peace and divine power and glory. Now, what are you going to, you're going to have to decide, your people, you're going to have to go, go ahead and begin to take a hold of this realm because if you will passionately take a hold of this realm, this realm will be manifested in a radical way through your life. And when that happens, a whole new dimension of revival begins to take place. There will be a great revival. I have confidence that there will be a great moving of the Holy Ghost, not just in the unreached people group nations of the world, but right here again in the United States of America. But it's going to take a different disposition than exists right now. It's going 
going to have to is going to take a different attitude, a different consecration, and a different commitment than exists right now. That means that there's got to be a completely a, a, a re, a re, a rearranging of things. There's going to have to be a revival of that which God has placed in the church, accepted once again by the hearts of the people in a passionate way, in such a in such a such a magnitude that they can't live without these things. Huh? A confidence, a boldness, an expectation. These things are, these, these words, a confidence, a boldness, an expectation, always associated with faith, the demonstration of faith, always associated with authority, always associated with power. Now, let me, I wanted to read this, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ being demonstrated in the earth. That's the light unto the world. I want to make sure everybody understands what I mean when I say power. The power of the Holy Ghost that immediately causes the stronghold of Satan to lose its grip of authority off of a person's life. It causes sickness and disease to go out of the person's body. The torments of the mind to be broken. Hebrews chapter 11. In fact, chapter 1, forgive me. Chapter 1, verse 1. This is, who God, this is who Jesus is. This is who Jesus said he was. This is who Jesus declared himself to be. Those who were witnesses of, his, of, who he, of what he said and what he did spoke these things. God who at sundry times, God who at different times and in different manners spoke in times past by, unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Jesus is speaking. He's saying, who will go for me? Just as Father was speaking, and we read in Isaiah chapter 6, Father was speaking, and he was saying, we heard and saw as, through the eyes, as it were, and experience the, of Isaiah, he beheld the divine power and glory of God, not just in the temple of earth. There's a vision. He was caught up. He caught, saw Father high and lifted up. And his glory, his train, all that ministered to him. And all that pertained to him, filling the temple. And he heard the Lord say, who will go for us? Huh? He said, who will go for us? Didn't he? He didn't say, who will go for me? He said, who will go for us? Didn't he? Hallelujah. In Elijah, I mean, forgive me, in Isaiah, basically retracted. He, he recoiled in the midst of that glory. In the midst of that glory, this holy prophet of God become, as it were, an unclean thing. And he said, Lord, I'm unclean. I dwell in the midst of unclean people with unclean lips. Here before, he's radically speaking on behalf of God, but now there's a greater encounter with God. Huh? And a greater contrast now being displayed. A greater need now being highlighted. And what does the Lord do? Sends a seraphim. Who can't, who, though the seraphim is so holy, he's the minister of holiness to the Lord, singing, crying, the singing the song, holy, holy, holy. He can't touch the coals. Coals aren't going to burn, an fire ain't going to burn an angel. Huh? Fire ain't going to burn an angel. Any more than fire would burn three Hebrew children and step them into a realm of faith because they were unwilling to disobey God. And that's a big part of faith, unwilling to disobey Huh? Unwilling to disobey. Unwilling to be different than what God said for you to be. Unwilling. Unwilling. People, you're going to have to get radical. You're going to have to get bold. You're going to have to get confident. You're going to have to get persuaded. You're going to have to have an assurance. Huh? There is an access into his presence. There is an access into, unto him. There is an access by faith into all his grace. There is the riches of, of, of all that Father has for us. All wrapped up in the understanding of this glory that God has made available for us in Christ Jesus when he made us heirs and co-inheritors, one with him. Something that we've got to accept because everything around us is saying it's not so. You can't do that. You can't be that. You can't go there. You can't have that. Everything around you is limiting you, demanding of you, dictating to you. You've got to be this. You've got to do that. Who are you going to believe? 
Who has believed the Lord's report? I'm going to tell you right now. Those who have believed the Lord's report are those whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. The more we will believe what he says, the more we're willing to obey and be willing to be conformed to those things which he's described, the more there's a display of his glory and of his power and of his majesty to us and through us. It's just that we stop along the way. We stop in an expression. We stop in a, you know, in an event. We stop in a... In, some dimension of, of his goodness, as it were. People, oh, I'm saved, and you know, and I, I don't, I don't drink, and I don't cuss, and I don't steal, and I don't lie, or whatever anymore. And I, you know, and I go to church on Sundays, and I feel really good about everything now, and, and we're good. When there's, it's just, you know, it's like, it's like the moment of the beginning. You just, you know, and but actually, it's less, because at the moment of the beginning in God, when you're born of Him. The, the first love compels you, huh? has gra grabbed a hold of you. You have a confidence. Think about the confidence and the boldness. If you were born in a move of God and baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, there's a boldness and a confidence that is there. Huh? And people forsake that boldness and the confidence because they step out and they lay hands on the sick and somebody didn't get healed. Now all of a sudden they're trying to, you know, they feel like a failure and they're redefining God's word and they're just, you know, blaming themselves and I must not be good enough. And it's all about the, their own human effort, their own human ability, what they perceive themselves to be rather than it being an obedience to the word of God and not willing to stop or shut up or, or, or move aside. God, what Jesus, what has Jesus spoken right now? What has he declared right now for us to go and do? Are we willing, what has he described us to be? Are we willing to go and do it? Are we willing to abandon and forsake everything and go and do it? <laughs> I mean, think about how, are we, are we, unwilling to let go of our stuff must we hold on to our stuff i'm telling you your stuff will destroy you your stuff will destroy you your stuff will keep you back from all the good things that father has for you in these last days he's spoken to us by his son whom he's appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And we look and we understand what, what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, and verse 28 through 32, especially verse starting verse 28, he's predestinated us to be conformed unto the image, unto his image. He's predestinated us to be conformed unto the image of his son in all things, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren the firstborn we're born of a family that are all supposed to be the sons of god <laughs> hello he's firstborn among the brethren and we're all given the same ministry we've all given the same authority no he was and we not no don't no, say that that's false doctrine false doctrine to walk in the ministry of jesus to follow jesus to imitate jesus what is it you're following jesus to doing then everybody recognizes that jesus said you must if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to have to come follow me. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Everybody recognizes that we're supposed to imitate God. Exactly what does that mean to you? Being on the music team? <laughs> Being on the worship team? What does that mean? What does that look like? Father has described what it looks like to us. He's given to us a testimony that is an accurate depiction to the, to the ministry and the, and the life of Jesus. Look with me here quickly in Colossians chapter 2 for just a second. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. Paul's just desiring that the church's heart be, be comforted, be knitted together in love unto all the riches of the full assurance. There are great, there's a great treasure chest with every kind of rich riches, with everything that you need to, as it were, obtain everything that is available. You understand? Because that's the simile. What do you do with riches? You buy whatever it is that you want or whatever it is that you need. You get whatever is available. Whatever is available to you, whatever has been made available in the world around us, <laughs> 
is limited by what, how much money you have to spend. It, it, right? Your possession of it is limited by how much treasure you have. Father places the full, he places this treasure, these riches within the framework of the full assurance. A full assurance of what he is to us. A full assurance of what he's done for us, of what he's given to us, of who he's called us to be. Why would we want to be anything other than heirs and co-inheritors with Jesus? Why would, we want to, why would we want to spend our life for nothing? Why would we want to exchange our life for a job, for a career, for a house, for possessions, for earthly things, for human recognition? When all the time, Father has given us the privilege to rule and reign with Jesus right now in this life. To fully represent heaven. To go everywhere right now. Conquering and subduing. And, and breaking off every stronghold that Satan has placed upon men. But that is a realm of the anointing. That is a realm of divine power. It's a realm of divine authority. It's a realm of the life of Jesus Christ. That we have to become confident of. We have to embrace fully. The authority is ours. Whether or not we function in that authority is our own choice. It's what we give ourselves to. It's what we've sold ourselves for. You're selling yourself whether you recognize it or not. You're a servant to something. And if I can, by the help and grace of the Holy Ghost, frame this up in such a way that will penetrate all the stuff that has been built up in your mind and maybe even the calluses that have formed around your heart to shake you out of the sleep and to awaken, to say, wait a minute, awakening comes when somebody hears the word of God and says, oh my, God has something far more for us than what we've been living in, and then they begin to pursue the will of the Father, and, will re and they are relentless about it, and they will not let up until everything that God has expressed is revealed to their life and the lives of those that they speak to. Men have given their whole life. Pray and hide gave his whole life. I mean, literally, when he died, his heart was moved from one side to the other. He gave his life, he gave his passion to awaken a nation. To, to, to say, what does it take to bust through this calloused heart? What does it take to bust through the mind-blinding spirits, the deception? You know what? Nobody knows that they're deceived. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not deception. <laughs> when you're deceived, you don't know it. Hello. And everything that you're doing that is not, everything that is in the Word of God, that is described in the Word of God, that's not going on in your life, is an indication of deception. People uh, will justify why they don't have to do stuff that God has described and declared in His Word. They just justify it. I've seen preachers justify why they don't have to love somebody. And I mean, just, there's no end to it. You can justify why it is that you live the way you live and do the things you do. But all that is is an indication of deception. The only way to break free, Jesus said, you should know the truth and the truth shall liberate you. Yes? Hallelujah. <laughs> The spirit of truth has come to lead us and guide us into all truth. Huh? So you have to start with the first sentence in Matthew huh? and begin to go ahead and take everything that God says and begin to, and to, begin, and, and begin to apply it and, and live it out in your life. And quit having the excuses for the things that you do that, do, that don't look like the life and the nature of Jesus, the life and the character of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to be willing to put a stop to things that you've allowed to define you, things that you've allowed to consume you, even. They have nothing to do at all with what Christ Jesus described for us to be doing right now as those who are in the kingdom of the dear son. 
if you find yourself living in the kingdom of this world subject to the things that are dictated by this world, by your social system, by your culture, you live under the prince of the power of the air and under his dominion. That's pretty radical, isn't it? God has a realm of faith. He says, well, what, do we, what does Caesar need? Well, go catch fish. He'll get a coin out of his mouth. Take care of that. God's got a miracle realm for us to live in, to command the wind and the waves. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name. You know, the Lord is so long-suffering. He's amazingly long-suffering. You know, if, you're, if, you, if you don't get this and you're 89 years old, he'll still be preaching the same thing to you. And 89 years old. Lights, come on. Oh, I see. Lord, I see. And maybe you see good enough that you could go ahead and live another 80 years because you could step into a miracle of faith. Hallelujah. And make up, and hallelujah, make up for wasted years and see that, you know. Uh, and see a life, a life that's lived for yourself turned around and now he restores unto you what the canker worm made up and what the caterpillar consumed. What you spend on yourself. Oh, sukura maste, it na mandere tasty, locura mambete kush to paranea, eze bernoretia, libanda coro se viti kala masete ishia, hamberane, hanemangoste, halemangoste retea, ha ne ekeste renaste in a becana, halemambrosotaya, voro si ishi, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every unclean spirit, every unholy thing, every lying power of darkness that has tried to persuade men's minds and thinking that are in this place, to believe and to do things that are contrary to the Word of God or, at least, or even not in agreement with the Word of God, I break off that stronghold now in Jesus' name. I remove that power from off of you that you might be liberated to now begin to flow and function in this divine grace. Hallelujah. 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 See, Paul has just said over here in Colossians 1.27, he, he, te he tells us, in verse 26, he says, The mystery which was hid from the ages, from generations, but now are made manifest to the saints. What? To whom God would make none what is the riches. What are the riches of his glory? Where you, somebody says, where do you find the riches of his glory? I want, the, I want to function in the riches of his glory. Where do you find the, the hidden treasures of God? Where do you find all these things that Father has made available to us so that we can accomplish those things which he's given to us to do right now? You find it right here in recognizing that Christ is in you. It's the mystery of the fellowship. See it? It's the mystery of the fellowship. Now, all of a sudden, you are resourced with everything that you have need of to accomplish that all, all that God has said for us to do. I mean, listen to me. Here's where you find the resource to accomplish everything that God has given us the authority as sons to be. Here, there is a confidence that is found in a relationship with Him. There is a confidence that is found in the, death, the, the word which Christ Jesus, the King of Kings, is now speaking from heaven. A word that, that can't pass away. That it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for me to try for me to, to, to function, move in the word of God and his word somehow fail. Or his word somehow not be realized by those who lay hold of it. Romans chapter Romans chapter over look at, there's so much to say here, but let's go go real quickly with me to Romans chapter five. Verse two. Well, verse one is important. Can't leave anything out. Therefore being justified freely. Therefore being made right, righteous, being made right with God. Therefore, being sons and daughters, being sons of God, being those who are acceptable in the beloved. 
Hallelujah. Those who've been washed in the blood, cleansed from their sins. Those who've been made a new creation, given a new heart, and given a new spirit. That's the faith, you see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, just hold your finger on that for just a second. Just hold your finger there for just a second. Can you hear me? Hold your finger there for just a second. Go to 1 John. Chapter 3. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just, well, there's all of these confidence verses of Scripture in here. Hallelujah. Just start verse 2, verse, chapter 2, verse 28. Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, you may have confidence before him and not be ashamed at his coming. He says to us, Behold, verse chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. We're irrelevant to the world because it knew him not. Behold, beloved, now are you the sons of God. And it does not, it does not yet appear what you shall be, but, you know that when we, but we know that when we shall appear, we, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Where we shall see him as he is. There is a, there is a graduation one day. And it, what, what a great hope. Everybody who has this hope purifies himself even as he's pure. And you think about this hope or you think about this confidence. Elpsis, literally, the word elpsis, Greek word elpsis that we translate. Hope is most co commonly translated in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Is most it is most commonly translated confidence. Everyone who has this co confidence. Oh, what kind of confidence do I have that when I see him, I should be like him? I should see him as he is. I, I should be like him. I'm going to graduate into a place with him and, and, and be raised up together with him. My resurrection is already, my resurrection is already signed, sealed, and delivered to me. It's already guaranteed to me in that Jesus raised from the dead because I'm raised up together with him now. I'm raised up. If you then be risen with Christ, what do you do? You're seeking those things which are above, not those things which are on the earth. I have a confidence that I'm raised up together with him, that my life is hid in him. Our resurrection, the resurrection of the just, the resurrection that's going to happen in the not too distant future for our lives when Jesus shall descend with the voice of a, with the sound of a trumpet and the voice of an archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and sh remain shall be caught up with them. That is a resurrection that is just like his resurrection going from this earthly tabernacle into a glory that he alone possesses because we don't exist outside of him. Well, how about not existing outside of him right now? How about not existing outside of him right now? Huh? How about, not, how about refusing? How about deciding right now that it doesn't matter what your finances says about you, you refuse to exist outside of Him? How about right now it doesn't matter what your circumstances says about you, you refuse to exist outside of Him? What if you decided right now it doesn't matter all the things that you believe about yourself that are based upon your successes and your failures and things that everybody says about you and says concerning you, you refuse to exist outside of Him. It doesn't matter what people say you can do and can't be, how little of a preacher or big of a preacher, how little of an evangelist, how big of an evangelist, how little of a saint, how big of a saint. You refuse to exist outside of Him. It will not be measured nor quantitated outside of Him. Immediately, you would start flowing all nine gifts of the Spirit. Immediately. 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 Your problems, those things that Satan is able to come and grab a hold of your head and take a hold of you with the claw of his authority will no longer be able to subdue you. There, I mean, there are so many confidence verses of Scripture in here. Let me just read a couple more to you try to get over where I want to be.
Verse 18. Little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. Neither in tongue, but indeed in truth. And hereby we know that we are, hereby we know that we are the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Have a great assurance, have a great confidence. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, then what we have confidence toward God. How, how do you get out? How do you get out of a of a, of a place? How do you get out of a place of constantly feeling condemned or accused? To get over into a place of where there is no condemnation, where there is a great confidence, a great boldness, a great assurance. You know, Paul sets it up in. in in, in Hebrews chapter 10 when he says cast not away your confidence which has a great payday for you or a recompense of reward literally the word means payday when the paymaster comes to give you your wage he's saying that all in view of that we have access into the presence of the living God we come with all boldness into the holies of holies to have an audience and more than an audience because the mystery of the fellowship and the mystery all the riches of the of the understanding and the mystery of God of God and of the Father and of Jesus Christ Colossians 2 2 you, you with me all the treasures all the riches of the treasure of understanding in the mystery of God and of the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ comes to beckon in the view that we find ourselves in Him. He's in us. Jesus says, Father, I've given them my glory like you've given me your glory. The glory you gave to me, in other words, I've given it to them. Father, I've given them my glory like you gave them, like you gave me your glory. Here, listen. Father, the same glory that you gave me, I'm giving it to them, that they may be one just like we're one. Not you and me, one. One with him. And he emphasizes it. He emphasizes it. Father, as you are in me, I am in them, that they might be complete in one. That they might be one, <laughs> even as we are one. Think about this. Just think about this. Jesus said, if you, if you just do what I say, if you'll keep my word, if you'll just make those things which I've given you an opportunity to participate with more important to you than anything else, then here's what's going to happen. My Father and I will come dwell in you. And I'll manifest myself to you. See, could you imagine the idea of you assuring your heart and convincing, allowing your heart to be convinced that the very power and glory of the living God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, right now, tabernacles on the inside of you. Well, then now, all of a sudden, you step into something far greater than you. Now, the greater one now lives on the inside of you, and, 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 and you've overcome the world because he lives on the inside of you. And now, there, there's a power at work on the inside of you, a treasure that is on the inside of you, a confidence that you have now that is not in yourself, but a confidence that is God. You have a vote of non, no confidence for your own human ability, but you're absolutely persuaded. You have total confidence in what God has declared and what God has given and what God has established. Uh-oh, we're looking for a shift here. I'm looking for a radical change. I'm, I, I want something to happen that's on the level of taking you and throwing you down to the ground and pinning you there and saying, submit. You listening to me? This, you're going to have to get radical with this. You're going to have to rough yourself up. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to you're gonna have to slap yourself around a little bit to wake up. Huh? I'm trying to get you out of a dream and you don't want to come out. Listen to me. I'm trying to get you. God wants to awaken the church. God is looking for some nucleus of people that he can begin to move through that a church would be awakened. Now listen to me. You, don't, you are not going to be a part of God's awakening needing to be awakened. You get to be a part of God's awakening because you are awakened and you step into it and you're doing it. You're doing it, and you won't allow anything else, and you won't submit to anything else, and you won't believe anything else. It's it. 
You're not waiting for another day. Everything that God has said is what you're doing, and you're not going to be persuaded of anything else. It's not going to start tomorrow. It starts today. Everything that Jesus said, you're living it, you're doing it, you're not waiting on it. It's here, it's now. If you haven't, been, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, he's here right now to change you, give you everything that you need in a change so that you can be one with him, so that you can agree with him, so that you can freely receive all that he has to give, which eyes not seen because they can't see it, which ears can never heard because they can't hear it, which hearts have never understood because a man's heart cannot understand it, but as revealed to us by the Holy Ghost, Father has freely given to us all that he has. If he spared not his own son, because he wanted this fellowship with us, but gave him over for the sins of every one of us, how much now shall he also buy him? How much more now shall he also buy him freely give us? All things. Quit chasing your money. Quit chasing your stuff. Quit chasing your, your own visions and your own dreams. Quit tra chasing your own will. Quit tra chasing the dictates of how you can imagine it. Get fall down on your face before God and say, and, and say, Lord, I surrender. Then get up and start living like Jesus. I am fall down on your face and surrender and get up and start functioning like a, like a son of God. Like an a, a heir of God and a co-inheritor of Jesus. You got to only learn these things because you're going to open up the Bible and the word of God is going to be a delight unto you and you feast on it. It isn't some kind of religious duty you have. Feast on it. <laughs> it's the most delicious, most wonderful, most, most appetizing, most exciting, exhilarating. It's, <laughs> it's, ecstasy, it's ecstasy to your soul. <laughs> that is another word for delight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's going to take delight to another level for you, okay? <laughs> it's an excitement beyond... Uh, <laughs> that which you can contain within your emotions. I'm telling you right now, there is a place you can come into God at this moment in the Holy Ghost where the Word, you can't, the Word of God is such a delight to you, you can't put it down. Then the Word of God will, will correct you and instruct you. Be, he would just wait for somebody to preach to him on, on Sunday morning or listen to a Bible message on the radio. There is going to be a limited amount of instruction that God the Holy Ghost is going to be able to give you uh, living that kind of a life. You're going to have to open up the Word of God and begin to read the Word of God. And I'm talking about the whole counsel of God, Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. And not stop and let God then begin to highlight things to you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Beloved, listen to me. Oh, what manner the love... Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What kind of sons of God? As many as received him, he gave authority to be sons. Now, cast not away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward, has a great payday. God has called you and I to go and do these things, to go preach all these words of life. Do not let up. Do not stop for a second. Hear me. Let's look for just a second. It's, it's something here in Job. Job was a champion for the Lord. He was a champion. He was a champion for humanity. Everybody knows that. Satan says they all, none of them, I've, been, I've, I've, I've just come from walking to and fro and up and down. Basically, he was saying, the world is mine and all humanity is mine. And God has one person, he says, you consider my perfect servant Job is upright in all of his ways. He's righteous in all of his ways. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if God says a man's upright in all his ways, righteous in all his ways, you can make, you can, you can rest assured that he is. And Job says to God, Job, Job, uh, Satan then accuses God and accuses Job and says, he serves you for nothing. You got a hedge about him. I can't touch him. Let me touch him. He'll curse you. God says, I got a champion. I know what he'll do. I know where he'll stand. Huh? Job, Job loses everything. And here is, here, listen to him. I love this. I just, I, I love reading Job. I can't put Job down. 
I'll go start reading something. I'm translating stuff. And I'll go back and read Job. I was on the airplane last night just reading Job. Just reading. The, the wisdom, the insight that is there, the opportunity that you and I have to step into something that is far beyond that which you're stuck in. You're miserably stuck in something that God wants to break you out of. We're miserably, we allow ourselves to, to miserably be confined in a limited realm. And Father has opened up to us an access into the grace, into this grace, into his grace. Which is every dimension of all that he has provided for us. Airship. That is found in airship. Sonship and airship are absolutely equated. Do you know that? Hold your finger on Job 23. And I'm going to prove that to you quickly. Satan comes along and says, you not. People come along and say, you not. You need to stand up and say, I am. I am said, I am, so I am. So shut up. So I bind you right now in, in Jesus' name, you lying thing. What's a lie? Anything that's against the truth. What's the truth? His word is truth. He's truth. Everything else is a lie. You got that? I hope you got that. I want you to get... We, we want you to get that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. <laughs> Go back to Job 23. No, I'm, no, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Galatians. Go Galatians. Go Galatians. I just want you to get it. I just want you to believe the Word of God. I just want you to hear the Word. We didn't come to sit in church till 2 in the afternoon. Well, I was pressing for 4. I'm pressing into a realm. We're going to talk about the things that we need to lay hold on the things that God has commissioned us to do. His word is powerful. It's living. All I got to do is receive it and let my heart be convinced of it. It will spring up and do what it, is, what it was sent forth to, to, to do, to accomplish. I don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. We've got to agree with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's not too hard, is it? All I got to do is agree with you, Lord. You have no idea the potential power that rests on the inside of you. It is the very power that framed the ages. The very power that created all things is living and dwelling and abiding on the inside of us. No, I'm gonna tell you, listen, I, I I listen, I felt such a power of doubt and unbelief when I started preaching. You cannot allow such things in your life to listen to if you're not careful, Satan. And the things that, that he will utilize through the circumstances of your life and your surroundings and your environments and the things that you're going through to persuade you of a lie. And you will lose all your expectation in God, or most of it anyway. You'll lose your confidence in Him. You'll lose your boldness in Him. You'll lose your assurance in Him. You'll get beaten down and thrashed and left lying, laying in a ditch. People, we must rise up and with boldness and with confidence. And it doesn't matter what the results are. Live out the word of God fully. Do it. I don't care if, you, if you're running around and you're trying or praying over a hundred people in a day to be raised from the dead and no one gets raised. Don't stop. Keep doing it because that's what Jesus said to do. The results are not the issue. The obedience to the word of God and you and I going and doing it. That is the issue. It's got to, we've got to have a confidence. There's got to be a boldness. The stuff that has stripped us of our identity, of who that he has given us, that he paid such a high price for us to have, has got to become more important to us than anything else. Otherwise, we can't have it because this is rich. <laughs> These are all the treasures of life. These are all the riches of life. It's free, but it isn't cheap. And this is just not some little power. This is all power and authority. 
And I'm really trying my very best to get to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And it's the long way to get there. I'm going to get there eventually. I'm going to get there. To, I want to just grab a hold of you and say, listen, these things aren't even going to be a reality. You're not going to know how to take the shield of faith. You're not going to understand how to utilize the shield of faith, which will quench every... We'll stop everything that opposes you, everything that tries to stand against you from functioning in signs, wonders, and miracles, from moving in the realms of, of, of whatever it is that you have need of, the financial blessings, whatever it is that you have need of. It doesn't matter. God doesn't limit it. People place financial, I think, blessings above the, the, the spiritual blessings of signs, wonders, and miracles with the fr in the framework of seeing the lost set free and delivered, the sick and the diseased healed and cured. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're like me, I mean, we've we, we, we been running on minimal sleep to accomplish the things that God has told us to do. And there's this, and, and goodness gracious, the Lord began to deal with me. You heard me say it last week about moving into another realm of faith. And it's, it really is moving into another realm of faith to spend more money. <laughs> Why? Because we need to hire human resources to do the things I'm running around trying to do on my own, myself. Because I don't have anybody else to do them. And I'm not singing, you know, a little, you know, song of poor oh me. I'm just telling you. Let's pour out. Can you? I mean, you just got to, we just got to be able to say our life's being poured out for the gospel. For the kingdom of God. And Praise God for your, your influence to reach one, two, three, four. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's more than 3 billion people that have never heard the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you may not be responsible, but I know, I heard that 3 billion people have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, so therefore I'm responsible. I don't know about you and what you're going to do with your life. And I'm going to tell you right now, I pray in Jesus' name you'll get responsible because when you do, you'll get passionate about the things that only God can supply for us to go get the job done. Then you'll have faith to enter into this realm of grace. Hallelujah. You will have a realm of faith. You'll have an act. See, it's an access by faith to enter into this realm. But when we enter into this realm, there's all this opposition coming against us. What are we going to do? Then we need the shield of faith <laughs> that will quench the, 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 all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We, gotta, we need to know how to stand in faith. You ever heard me tell you, tell you about the preacher who sewed his finger on? Can I tell you about this? That way, I'm going to tell you this scripture. I'm sure scripture. I'm going to tell you this story to highlight some scripture. And that way, if I ever say to you, sew the finger on, you know what I'm talking about, okay? There was a preacher who was contemporary with Mariah Woodward said, he cut his finger off. And so he told the doctor to sew it on. The doc wouldn't sew it on, so he got it sewed on. Because it was just, it was severed and it was, couldn't put it back together. It was back in the 20s. He sewed it on, a big old flamed, rotten little thing on his hand. It's called the shield of faith. It's called a place to stand and I will not be moved. Hey, man, you got that thing that's going to start working. It's going to start, it's going to start eating your hand away. It's going, to, it's going to create sepsis, gangrene, rot your body right from that one finger you got sewed on. He's standing up and he's making a point. But he's preaching and his finger flies off and hits a guy on the front row who was in a wheelchair. And the guy was so shocked by it, he's trying to get it off. He stands up. He's paralyzed from the race down, trying to get the finger off of him, healed. And the preacher preaching, this happened. A finger grew out right there in the meeting. Listen, these things, this is reality. It's reality. It's a realm. Your disposition will, will impact what realm you're living in. Your confidence, your expectation, what you believe will determine what realm you live in. What access, what limits you, what confines you. The Word of God will liberate you. The Word of God will cause you to step into a boundless realm of divine authority. There's, a, there's not even a word to describe it. Other than to say authority, because it's to say the ability to communicate His glory, the beauty of His person. And, 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 you know, I see on the faces of many people in here today, you, you'd rather be that than anything else. What do you want to be? Oh, I just want to train dogs.
I want to be a dentist assistant. Come on, give me a break. I, I want to design bridges. What? You got this choice and that choice. You got a choice of your life in him or a choice of your life in yourself. What do you choose? And there is a, listen, there is quantitative measurements that prove your choices. Now, quit lying to yourself and get on with the program. Uh, you're listening to me. Hold your finger on Joe Tweet 3. I'm going to just go show you this. Next time, you, next time I say to you, sew the finger on, you know what I'm saying? I told a preacher last night, I said, sew the finger on. He is asking me what to do. He's about to step in. He's about to step into, he's, he's, in a, he's in a battle, he's in a transition. I told him, I reminded him of a dream that he had about 20 years ago. And I said, let go and fly now yourself. Fly. Because he had this dream where he was hanging on to the, a wing of a jet taxiing on the runway. And the, and the jet was taken off. This is a very uncomfortable feeling. He said, you know, shouldn't I be inside the airplane? So I said, just let go and fly now. Because he went through one great transition, spiritually, financially, materially. His influence in the realms of the kingdom of God where, you know, Satan has got to be able to say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, and I know you. Hallelujah. Now just go ahead and fly. And he said, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. And how are we going to do this and that? I said, sew the finger on that's because it's radical, man. It's radical. It's putting something on that potentially will kill you. But you are so convinced of who God is and what he said, you're going to go all the way. You, you're not limiting nothing, holding anything back for yourself, putting a little away just in case as a safety measure. <laughs> Risk it all. With total abandonment, this is what God calls us to tell them to do. Forsake our lives. Risk it all with total abandonment. He's not going to be on the shelf with all of our other little choices and all of our other little gods and things we want that we value. He's not going to be on the shelf with it. He's opened up the door to an unimaginable, unlimited realm to where he said, everything I have, I give to you. What? Everything. All that is mine. I entrust you with it. Look here in Galatians chapter 4. Real quickly. Bala story. Bala story naya. Bala ngeishte. Bora nanbrede. Bora serineyafa. Listen, you're going to have to recognize that the things within your imaginations, the things within your, which literally is your logical reasonings, will ultimately come out against what God has commanded you to be. And that's why he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but God power. To bring into captivity every thought. To cast down imaginations and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus. You're going to have to recognize that there hat. listen, you've got to recognize you must make a shift. Some of you are very comfortable with the way that you're living and you're self-justifying. That's self-righteousness. You're self-justifying. You're saying, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Forget about it, man. Give me a break. Where's the ministry of Jesus? Please, let me see it. Where are these works and greater works? Please, let me see. I'm tired of people saying, well, I've reached a thousand people. Oh, I reached four million people with the kingdom of God. I'm doing it. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's over three billion people that haven't... Look... Yeah, I'm not, listen, if I would went all the way with this thing, how many people in the, right here in Southern California have had an encounter with Jesus Christ? I've said it again. How many people here in Southern California have had an encounter with religion? Just about everyone. How many people have had an encounter with the glorious power and ministry of Jesus Christ? I say very few. Why? Because of you and me. We've abdicated. We're doing our own thing. We're happy and satisfied with our doctrinal ideas and our concepts and our, and our self-justifying. No more self-justifying. Let's get broken, man. Let's bend. Let's do as they did in the, in the days of old and say and cry out, Oh, God, come bend me now. Come break me now. 
come change me now. Oh, let the floodlight of truth and, re and reality shine upon my soul that no lie will be able to rule me or influence me anymore. Come on now. Come on now. These things need not be delayed any longer. There's not a better cause for you to live your life. There's not a better way for you to live your life. than to live it in the majesty and the splendor of the living God? Should we have that opportunity and then choose rather our own way and find ourselves bold and confident before Him on that day? No. No. No, we're not going to do that. No. No. No, we're not going to do that. No. No. I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But not for my own cause. Jesus didn't lift up his voice and cry out for his own cause. He said, shh, don't tell anyone. He just did all the stuff and said, I don't need to be publicized. That's what Jesus said. I don't want to be publicized. He said it in the midst of his great miracles over and again. I don't want anybody publicizing me. I don't need no campaign manager. Don't say nothing. He, his scripture says he literally rebuked them, charging them, saying, I don't want to be publicized. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He should not lift up his voice in the street nor cry aloud. Or in other words, speak out for his own cause. He came to speak the word of the Father alone and call men to come over into a place of divine power and glory that men were created to live in when God shaped Adam from the fine dust of the earth and took from his rib, as it were, and formed a woman and brought forth mankind to live in his glory and to rule and reign with him throughout the ages. A plan that has only been short-term, just been interrupted on a short-term basis. Jesus Christ came, having redeemed us, set things back in order so that we find ourselves right where God purposed us to be in Him. Hallelujah. Have you purposed yourself today to be in Him or to be in religion? To be in Him and be in yourself. What is it that you've purposed yourself? Have you purposed yourself with total abandonment to go ahead and do an experiment and find out whether or not His Word is true? Whether all, all these things which He says pertaining to this life in God should be manifested through you. Don't you let nobody mess with your confidence. I want God the Holy Ghost to get you bold. Listen to me. When they were being threatened and they were being whipped and they were being told by the leaders and the rulers, those who knew better supposedly than anybody else, don't speak anymore in this name. They went to prayer meeting and they cried out and said, Oh God, behold their threatenings. Grant us boldness. Grant us boldness. Speak your word. Because that's where faith is, and boldness and confidence and assurance. Boldness and confidence and assurance in what? Who God has made you and me to be as his partners. Who he is in us. Who he is in himself. Huh? Can't, you can't believe in a God who's all-powerful. Who lives, though, transcendent and absent from humanity. Transcendent and other from you. Because you'll never realize what the gospel declares. He has to be a very present God living and abiding and dwelling on the inside of you. Walking in you. Living in you. Moving in you. Seeing through your eyes. Speaking through your mouth. Walking through your feet. Behold, there comes a day, says the Lord, I will not take you by the hand as I took you when I led you, led you up out of the land of Egypt. But I shall dwell in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Walk in you. Powerful, huh? To be persuaded of it, to have your heart convinced of it. Listen to all the opposition, listen to all the threat, assailing things that Satan does because he set himself to he set himself against you to destroy you. He set himself against you to make sure that you do not succeed. Listen to me. That is what the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of, of, of this world, this God of this world, is right now has set himself with all of his wiles, with all of his lies. With all of his threats, with all of his accusations, it's time you no longer be unaware or ignorant concerning the devices of Satan, but rather take a hold of the mantle of the living God and wrap yourself in the mantle. Wrap yourself in Jesus. Wrap yourself in the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in his presence. Be continually filled with the Spirit. Giving yourself over to doing those things which God has caused us to do. Because if you go off doing your own thing, God's not going to be there. 
He will not be there. When you do what he said for you to do, he will be there. He will meet you there at the moment of obedience. He will meet you there. You came here today in obedience to the ways of the Lord because Father told us to gather ourselves all the, the more as we see the day approaching. We come here on Sundays not out of religion and tradition, but because we come to celebrate the resurrection. It's not something we just do every, you know, once a year. <laughs> it's not Passover, it's the resurrection. It's every Sunday. Hallelujah. In fact, I just go ahead and, resurre I go ahead and res celebrate the resurrection every day. I pray you will too. Galatians chapter 4, look at this. And because, verse 6, and because you are sons, and because you are sons, you forget. And because Christ Jesus lives in you, and because the Holy Ghost is living in you, because the Father has come to make his abode on the inside of you, because you've been joined unto him, and you're one spirit, because he lives in you, and you live in him. No man can earn this. No man could ever be deserving of this. It has nothing to do with what you're worthy of or deserving of. God takes the weakest and vilest man and promotes him into this place of glory. Oh, listen to me, listen to me. We make it too much on the merit and basis of our performance and who we think of, what we think about ourselves. Nothing to do with you anymore. To do all with Jesus Christ and him alone. That's the faith. You've been taught how to compete. You've been taught how, you know, to succeed through your own efforts and discipline. That's your culture. You need to abandon that for a second. Hallelujah. Come step over in here. Hallelujah. Into that which money cannot buy. That which man's discipline cannot earn. That which is freely given. Hallelujah. La robo sekiti la masatarade. La pandale ishikaya. I padno lo bokurataya. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, it's, it's high time God's people quit just being built up on Sunday to live the rest of the week getting deflated. <laughs> it's time God's people step into a realm of God's glory and go from glory to glory and every day get built up by the Spirit of the Lord, continue to be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah, redeeming the day. There's only one day, one way to redeem the day. People talking about, oh, darkness, gross darkness over the people. Oh, what are we going to do? There's a way to redeem the people. Arise! Be filled with the Spirit. You'll redeem the time. We'll redeem the time. We'll change the culture. Huh? You're not going to change nothing standing back, sitting on the, on the easy chair watching somebody else do it. Saying, go. Oh, I pray God give you the strength of ten oxen. I just had, I had somebody say to me, oh, we pray, we pray, we pray for you, brother. God give you the strength of ten oxen. Well, you know why? You can come over here and help pull a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I don't look to man. You don't need to look to man either. We look to Papa. Mm -hmm. That's right. I have a confidence that if nobody helped me, I'm going to get the job done. Huh? Why? Because I have help that comes from above. I have help. I, I'm going to, anybody that obeys God, God's going to resource them if they will not cast aside their confidence. Because people will say, well, you've gone too long. If it was going to happen, it would have already happened by now. I had a, we had this guy, one of our professors, organic chemistry teacher, he said, if you're going to win the Nobel Prize, you're going to win it by the age of 24. After that, just forget it. Your life's over. Just settle out for mediocrity, basically. Huh? People got that mentality. Moses didn't even step into his ministry until he was 80. Come on, man. He pursued it. Actually, he wouldn't be distracted. He pressed in. Come on. Come on. It looked like that God's promise to Abraham was way overdue. It was past the time. God will take you beyond your human ability. As soon as you get over your human ability, as soon as you get weaned from you, God can start moving. How long will that take? Are you listening to me? As soon as you realize you can do nothing of yourself, that is a hard one to get. I guarantee you'll be in church every day. You'll be saying, what's wrong with you, Pastor? When are you going to step into the move of God and start having meetings every night? What's wrong with you? Why is it you just want to have church four days a week? What's wrong? What's, what's wrong with the other three days? Man, we got to press in. 
That's what happens when you begin to touch heaven. You begin to, when you first of all see the call, the glory of it, you begin to now passionately touch heaven because you know that there's only one supply and resource that can possibly ever bring you into the place that God's called you and me to be. And all the way through it, there's confidence. There's confidence. There's confidence. One of the great apostles of faith who was asked one time, he said, what are you going to do if you pray for a whole line of people and none of them get healed? He said, I'm going to pray for the next line. <laughs> he said, I'm not moving by what you see. I'm doing what God told me to do. I'm not going to slow up. I'm not going to settle out. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to dilute the gospel. Just because people don't understand. Of course they don't understand. Preach the word of God. The light will come. Look, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in a heart saying, God's my dad. Hear me? That's called confidence right there. That's called boldness. That's called assurance. That's called my heart is convinced. Huh? He sent the Holy Ghost inside of me saying right through my own mouth. He's not sounding out here. God, the Holy Ghost is not out here sounding. He's not using some other voice. He's using my voice. He's going to use Annalyn's voice. Hallelujah. Brittany's voice. Hallelujah. He's going to use your voice. Hallelujah. Summer's voice. He's going to use your voice. Saying, God Almighty is my dad. Ha. Ha. Hallelujah. Now look at here. Verse 7. Verse 7. Wherefore, therefore, and because of this, you are no more a servant. You are a son. With the authority of the Son. Because you received Him. For, for John, you understand this. John says it over and over again more than anybody else. He constantly describes. Well, Paul did so as well. I mean, Paul did. I think Paul described either himself being in Christ Jesus or Christ Jesus being in him about 13 times in the first chapter of Ephesians. So, but nonetheless, John's constantly describing God living in us and us living in Him. Christ Jesus living in us and we living in Him. Stop any other thoughts. Shut them down. Anything that says you can't do it, lift it. Sew the finger on. Lift up the shield of faith, in other words. Sew the finger on. Lift up the shield of faith and put a stop to that thought. Put a stop to that limitation. Put a stop to that confinement right there. We don't break through this thing. God's church, God's glorious church, gonna break through this thing. Husbandman has long patience waiting for a precious fruit. He's waiting for a precious fruit that will come as a result of the refreshing rain and latter rain from heaven because people cry for rain in the time of rain because we're participating with Father's program, His purposes, His kingdom, His work. You're not going to step back and just accommodate a bunch of stuff that says you can live your life in the world and you're okay. <sighs> you hate your life in this world. Because you beheld your life in him. Ha, 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 ha. And having beheld my life in him, I'm going, you got to be kidding me. I'm not putting that monkey suit back on. I can see why people who don't believe in God think they came from monkeys. I can understand that. Who don't know this life in Jesus. They believe they came from the rocks and formed them. I didn't start with Darwin. That was something that was being taught 3,500 years ago, and probably before. The rocks have birthed us. Jesus. Therefore, you are no more servants but son. And if you're a son, if you're a son, you will be an heir someday when you get to heaven, when we all get to heaven. You're an heir. You're an heir. Heir. What's the whole point? A servant, a child, so long as he remains a child, differs nothing from a servant, though everything that his dad has belongs to him. 
but is under governors and tutors and mentors until the appointed time that now he can step into a responsible position to now be able to manage God's business. Uh-oh. God's business is a lost and dying world, not your pocketbook. God's business is to show the love of God to all mankind in a very practical way, delivering them from the torment and the disease and the sickness and the blindness of heart and mind. Rise up, O church of Jesus Christ, wherever you may be. It's time for the light of God's glory to shine. No more of you and me. This is the day which God has spoken of. He's commanded it to come forth. Who will hear? Who will respond to his will and the passion of his heart? Who will forsake all? Within with total abandonment, begin to live their life in him, to live, take their place in the kingdom, to sit down with him in his throne. For surely as we are raised up together with him and alive together with him, living in him and him living in us, our lives being not apart, not separated or distinct in any manner, but one, one integrated together, even so we are also seated with him in a heavenly realm of divine power and authority. And if sons, you are no more servants, but sons and heirs of God. Job in the midst of his trouble. I'm going to close with this and for now. And you go home and, or you can stay here, whatever you want to do. And you cry out to God. And we'll pick it up this evening for everybody who wants to press in. For everybody who wants to wrestle this thing. Take a hold of God. Until the light begins to shine. Until you get something that you must have. The strength of the Lord and the power of His might is available to you. It's actually there right now present here with you it has to be activated in your life god isn't commanding us to do something that we'll gain upon our own efforts or through the merit or midst of our own life it's something he has supplied to us freely somebody said how can you have the strength of the lord and the power of his might that's all power that's all strength because god the holy ghost <laughs> god the father and god the lord jesus christ dwells in you but you got to be convinced of it you have to be confident of it. You have to have an assurance, boldness. Do you know something? Father is right here hearing my word that I'm speaking right now. And he's looking at your response. He sees it. It's what's going on right here. Because he is earnestly looking right now for some people who will take this, take up this torch of the kingdom who will take up this banner, who will take up this mantle. I'm going to tell you right now, God describes in His Word authorities and mantles that have never been seen in the earth up to this point. And they are very much available. And there is a price to pay, and the price to pay is to a willing heart and say, okay, I'm doing it. I surrender all. I sell out to you, Father. Now I ask you to show me how to do this in a very practical way. And He does. He says, look at Jesus. Look at what He did. He went everywhere. How that God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power who went everywhere. Hallelujah. Preaching the gospel. Delivering everyone from the power of the devil. Amen. that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power. Healing all who went everywhere, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. In every moment, in every manner, every form, every shape, every dimension, he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That's you and me. That's our ministry. Now, right here, at this moment in time, an authority in prayer, an authority in word, to be able to decree a thing and it come to pass. Said, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You know what? 
just give us all a break and get over yourself because really it, it just really is very little that you're going through comparatively let's go ahead let's go ahead and find a place in Christ Jesus where it doesn't all these things does not change us doesn't move us doesn't sway, doesn't sway us there are more people who talk bad about me than good I guarantee you if I went with what people said huh I wouldn't do anything I'd have already been discouraged long ago that is nothing it should not move us what has God said about you what I know is what God has said about me I know what father has said about you and I'm gonna remind you over and again even when, you're, even when you're doing greater works than, than Jesus, I'm going to be reminding you. You call me up, I'll remind you. So the finger on. <laughs> then Job answered and said, listen to this. Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groanings. Oh, that I knew where I might find them. He's talking about God. That I might come even to his seat. I would order my calls before him. I'd fill my mouth with an argument. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No. But he would put strength inside of me. Look at his confidence. Listen to his confidence. Would, would, would he condemn me? Would he point a finger of accusation? Would he tell me of all these doctrines that you've declared? No. He would put strength within me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. The places where I used to find him all the time. The places where I used to access, to, access him. It seems to be shut off from me. That's what he's saying. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I will come forth as gold. Listen to this confidence. Listen to this integrity. Listen to this uprightness. Where is it his integrity? Where is his righteousness? Where is his uprightness? It is clearly defined in his confidence, his trust in God. Oh, hallelujah. Who will not budge, who will not bend, who will not bow. He will not let anyone take his uprightness from him. Everybody's trying to convince him of sin. Surely somewhere you did something wrong. Somewhere you oppressed the widow. Somewhere you oppressed the orphan. Somewhere you didn't do that which was right. Somewhere you erred in the way. Somewhere you walked in the pride and hardiness of your heart. Uh, haughtiness of your heart. He says, nay, never. Wow. Job. He's so radical, man. Does God got a champion today? I tell you, he does. His name is Jesus. And everybody who will resign their life to fully come over into Christ Jesus will become instantaneous. One with him. With all powers, all right, all authority, all purpose there with. Let me just read this, this is a little more. My foot hath he held, my foot hath he held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. My foot hath held his steps. I'm sorry. My foot, it's a miracle that I can even read right now. I mean, to tell you right now. Jesus, he gives us strength beyond the capacity of a human ability. This is a good thing. Never, never, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. If we can keep his commandments, if those sayings that he's spoken for us to do, then have we confidence towards God? Whatever we ask, he'll do it. That's 1 John 4. I have esteemed his, listen, neither have I gone back from his commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I don't live by bread alone. But by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. And this is before God raised up Moses. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. This is before the this is before the Exodus. It's amazing. He just says, he settles out. I am going, I don't understand it, I cannot explain it, but all I can tell you is I am going through what he has appointed for me at this moment in time for a destiny that is to come, that is already mine. Listen to me. See? Faith is the hypostasis, the place where you can stand, a footing that nobody can get you off of. It is. Faith is the hypostasis of things that you are confident in. Faith is a substance, and King James says, of things hoped for. But it is a, it is a place to stand. It is a hypostasis is many times translated, can be translated bold. A bold positioning. It, and as you know, Elpsis, as I've said already, today is a, is a word for confidence. Faith is a place that you can stand with confidence. Place that you can stand with confidence in those things which you are confident in. What are you confident in? You should be confident in that God has purposed that the ministry of Jesus Christ, that His Son be revealed in you. You listen to me. You listen to me. I, I want some practical, race, relational Christianity. I want you to get bold. I want you to get confident. I want you to start speaking plainly. You know, the, this word, um, parisia, which is a word for Greek word for confidence, parisia, is to speak plainly. It's one of the things that Jesus, you know, when you read in King James, he spake openly, he spake plainly, he spake boldly. That is the parisia, the confidence. He spake confidently. God, we want you to get a, a we want you to get a mouth full of the word of God, a heart full of the spirit of the Lord, and begin to speak out those things which God has forever settled in heaven. Hallelujah. We don't want you to be it. We don't want you to be one who's like a scribe and a Pharisee. We want you to preach with one like one who has authority. When people start telling you how that you know the Bible is just is not about this and that. It's about you know how men ought to live together so that you have good society. Just tell them you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what God said. God said this. Jesus said, "I am the door. I am the truth, the way, the life. You must be born of the Spirit. What the way you live right now is not good enough. God has condemned you. You are forever." Ever condemned before his presence and until you change until you change and become holy and acceptable unto him you have no opportunity with him to know him and the only way to become holy and acceptable before him is to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ to accept what Jesus did for us when he bore sin, his, our sins in his own body on the tree this is the beginning. But why should we just, people say, oh, let's just hang around the cross. Listen, we love the cross. We come to the cross. Somebody said, if you go beyond the cross, you've gone too far. Nonsense. I've gone all the way to the resurrection, the ascension, exaltation, and the seating together with him. Let's camp around the cross. Praise God for the cross. Let's camp around the resurrection too. Let's camp, camp, camp the most today. Let's camp, let's show them all. Let's camp around, seated together with them in the heavenly realm. Let's camp around being raised up together, living together with them. This life being made manifest in our mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, there is no way to deal with doubt and unbelief and unwillingness than to just rebuke it. I don't necessarily like to, I, I don't like to preach with a rebuke tone at all in my voice. I'm going to tell you right now, demon spirits, doubt, unbelief, listening to the voice of a liar who strips from you your confidence can only be dealt with one way, with a rebuke. So I pray in Jesus' name. It will yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Amen. I pray in Jesus' name, the chastening, amen, that chastening will yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness. 
What is it that you're going through? Can you just, can you just accept that there is no temptation that has come your way except for what God has allowed it? He's appointed it. He's allowed it and made a way of escape so that you can bear it? Can you just understand that God allows a certain level of opposition but gives to you the strength and the power of His might to be able to deal with it? He allows the wiles of Satan, every trick and every device that He allows that's coming out against you. God has allowed it. It didn't take God by surprise. Satan didn't, you know, <laughs> run over top of Christ Jesus' authority. Nothing gets to even blink unless He gives, authority, gives the permission because He has all power over all principalities and powers and might and dominion. Can you just accept that you can stand against this thing? Huh? Can you just accept that you have authority to prevail against these things? Can you just accept that God has given you power and authority to move these things out of the way? Can you accept that the church is the hinderer of iniquity? And that should we begin to be converted and turn to Him, then sinners will be taught in His way and transgressors will be converted? Can you begin to imagine what will happen when, when Holy Ghost conviction returns to the church, then Holy Ghost conviction can once again sweep the nations as it did in the days before? You know what the old preachers used to tell me when I was a little guy? You know what they would tell me? They would say, something terrible has happened to the church. Holy Ghost conviction that used to be in the church no longer exists. Something's terribly, something terrible has happened. There is a, there is a wave of darkness and rebellion that has swept over the masses of people in the church and they did not know it. They would describe to me the meetings. The meetings my dad used to have. The meetings my grandfather and great-grandfather and others have. That you would read about in books of, you know, Wigglesworth would have. Meetings that even Amy Simple McPherson would have. That Mariah Woodworth Eddard would have. Read those, read those meetings. Read, read books about those meetings. The strength of the Holy Ghost conviction that John G. Lake would have. And those are just recent days. The, the meetings that would happen just in the little glory barn. You know how big the glory barn was? Where, where the revival of Pentecost took place? About from that wall, that fake wall right there to about right here. Jam them in. Huh? It would be something looked down on and just criticized, and it wouldn't look like the blessing of God on it. Huh? Because Pop Seymour, one eye, standing there on that apple crate. So you get have a little platform. Apple crate. Just to be a little higher than everybody else. It ain't about your it ain't about the building. It ain't about the pomp and circumstance. It's about the cry and passion of the heart. It's about the hunger and thirst after righteousness. It's about a desire, a passion about, Father, I've got to be right in the big middle of the kingdom. I've got to be right in the big middle of airship. I've got to be right in the big middle of sonship. I've got to be right in the big middle of what you appointed me to be in Christ Jesus. What you purposed us to do. The world is going to hell without us. You listen to me. God has given to us the place to stand in His stead to execute His will in this earth. And if we abdicate, self-justifying, pursuing our own life, what will our end be? If we assimilate into all the stuff that's going on in the religious circles, it would just be, at best, neutralized. Because I'm telling you right now, if there's ever been a time that people have made merchandise of the gospel, it is today. People want to get anointing so that they can get fame. Nonsense. Huh? Everybody's struggling to be number one. Have number one hit this and that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a circus. It's a circus. So. It's about high time somebody rises up and starts doing what Jesus did. 
I'd rather be in the circus, at least looking like it, than sitting on a sofa at home. Huh? Criticizing it. Huh? At least somebody doing something over there in the circus. At least they went and left everything behind to go become number one. Huh? Become famous or whatever else. Give me a break. Forget about all the stuff. Everybody should be glad that they just counted in the number of the redeemed. Amen. Forget about all the stuff. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation when they provoked God in the wilderness. The gospel was preached to them, but didn't profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Today, decide whose side you're on and what your life really is about. Is your life about substance? Is your life about power, human, human power? Is your life about human positioning? Is your life about those things that you can acquire, that you can gain, your reputation? Huh? Or is your life about Jesus, consumed in Him for His divine purpose? Jesus went to one nation and told us to go to the rest of them. Jesus went to one nation and told us to go to the rest of them. That's why the greater works. He went to one nation and told us to go to the rest of them. Somebody said, well, Pastor, we just want to, you know, we want to go to work and support the ministry. Well, that's, you know what, that's nice of you, but the Lord really doesn't need that. He needs you to surrender and go. He had worked the miracle of the local church. He wants you to, he, he worked, he, God didn't raise up the church for you to sit in here and grow old. He raised up the church for you to get filled up and go so others can come in. Hello. We got, a, we got a church that is defined very different than what the Scripture defines it. He wants to just hold on to people. Gather more numbers. Gather more heads. It doesn't matter how, how much people produce. It's just all about numbers. Numbers. How much money came in the offering? How many people were in attendance? Nonsense. How many miracles did you work? How many souls were saved? How many signs? How many wonders? Huh? How many dead raised to life again? How many devils went out? Amen. Hallelujah. You want to quantitate something? Quantitate what's real. Amen. Hallelujah. Cut up I see Terry Maya. I want you to get by. If you sit back here feeling all bad about yourself, shame on you. You just have prison. And I want to get you delivered right now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to deliver you out of that prison. Amen. God has anointed me to open up the prison gates. Hallelujah. You don't have to sit there feeling sorry about yourself anymore. Hallelujah. You just rise up. Get yourself some boldness. Get yourself some confidence. Not in you. If you ever have boldness and confidence in yourself, it's going to do no one any good, especially you. All you're going to do is discover how big of a failure you are with all that boldness and confidence. But should you put your boldness and confidence in Him? <laughs> he will tell, redefine success to you. Hallelujah. He will redefine life to you. Purpose, meaning. You open up your mouth and speak, and devils will have to leave. Sickness will have to go at your command. You'll embrace persecution and rejoice in all your tribulation. You'll count it all joy because you'll just see how the grace of God rests upon you. I mean, right now, you're not going to get into the persecution and tribulation that I'm talking about until you get right in the midst of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, until you get to preaching. All the rest of it, all you're doing is just theory. It's time to, come on now. It's time to get out. It's time to get into the practical application of things. Come on now. Let's get out of the lab. Come on. Come on now. Get over in here. Come on now. Get over in here. Quit telling us about all the stuff you've done. Let's get, get on with the program. If you got to live in yesterday, you got no day. Because it's gone. We're, God's calling us right now to greater works. He said, they, those that know him shall be strong. Are you strong? Then you know him. And if you're strong, you'll do what? Exploit. So get with the program. Be an expectation of exploits. God told me the other day, speaking to me, I was laying on this terrible bed, mattress in the middle of nowhere, just
just couldn't sleep because I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, how many bed bugs are in this thing? How many rats are in this room? And I, and I just, just laying there, just overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord, just peace, presence of His goodness. Basically, been running on two, three hours of sleep, but I wasn't hallucinating. You see, you just get sleep deprived and you start hallucinating. I wasn't hallucinating. I was fine. I can I can go for two, three hours of sleep, around two, three hours of sleep for a while, and, and then go take a very long vacation. Just I've never been able to take a very long vacation. It's still, it's, we talk about it, and I say one one time. Sometime we're going to take a very long vacation. My wife always goes, heaven. <laughs> and I was laying there. I'm laying there. And I, could, I knew Father was in the room. I was on the airplane last night. And I knew the angel of the Lord was standing right behind me. I, everybody was seated because we were taxiing in. He was right there. I could feel him. I love that. See, Joe says, I went to the, I went to the left side where he usually is. I couldn't find him. I went forward and he was, and I went backward where before I, I could find him. But it seemed like I was cut off or shut off from him. And that's Job going through the situation where Satan was allowed to. But, you know, for us, I mean, come on, man. Jesus, our champion, that stuff's done. That stuff's done. But anyway, hey, I was laying there. And I want you to have these experiences. I'm telling you about the experience because God is real. His presence is real. His purposes are real. Before we went and shook in the nation of Paul and saw the stadiums, filled up in the different places God sent us, we went through devastating persecution. But nobody, everybody, I mean, it's like, you know, everybody left. Is it almost like that? You know, everybody has something bad to say. It's just the way it works, man. This is the way it goes down. But if you don't budge, if you don't move, you become persuaded that he is able to do everything that he has promised that the one who began good work in you should complete it. I'm telling you right now, nothing will stop you. Don't cast away your confidence because the paymaster is on the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> before, we started, before we started going, leading, the Lord gave us a huge property out there on the military base right after Clinton shut down the Navy out there on Harbor and Rosecrans. We saw people come in from all over the world. It was, the, it was one of the most trying times of my life. I did not know how I would go on. The press was great. I mean, the only piece of people that I knew had anything good to say about me was my wife and my kids. I mean, honestly, I don't think you had good things to say about me at the time. You left. No, it's just the way it is. It way it's, it's okay. It's just the way it goes down. It's the way it goes down. It's okay. It's okay. It's the way it goes down. You can't be moved. You cannot be moved. You listen to me. You cannot cast away your confidence. You got to know who you are in Him. You got to know who He is to you. Don't matter what's happening. You don't change your heart. You don't change your disposition. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this, this is the way it goes down. Just let him, just, just like David said, just go ahead and let him speak on, let him rail on. Perhaps Papa will hear it. Father will hear it. He come defend me. <laughs> come on now. Come on, man. I want you to grab, I want you to get yourself a position. I want you to get in the middle of it. I want you to get in the fight. I want you to get in the advancement of the kingdom of God, of seeing souls come into the kingdom. It's not by our own efforts. It's crying out of God. I want to be anointed enough to see people come into the kingdom. You just be, you look to Him. You don't look to yourself or anything. If you, if you need love, Holy Ghost. It's a relationship. Holy Spirit, fill me with love. Boom. He answers. You fill with love. Oh, God, I need joy. You fill me with joy. It's a relationship. Lord, I want to be able to reach the lost. I want to have an anointing to break off the yoke. He, he'll give it to you. When you get real, when you get serious. When it's more important to you than anything else. The hardest thing, and I'm caught making an altar call right now, the hardest thing is for you to recognize the things that are important to you that have nothing to do with God, have nothing to do with the purposes of God, have nothing to do with the kingdom of God, have nothing to do with this life in Jesus, and they're very important to you. 
There's sometimes I'm ministering to my wife. I say, baby, I know you love me. But Jesus has to, is Jesus more important to you? If I'm removed, will you, t will you carry on in the things of the kingdom? I've got to make sure. I've got to preach to everybody around me. Who are you? Where is your value? What things are important to you in this world? I want, I, I'm talking to my wife like this because there's a great anointing upon her life. I want to see that anointing go to where God has purposed it to go. I know what Father's preparing us to do. You know, in one, in one year, one year in the Holy Ghost, one year in the Holy Ghost, you'll do more than you could have done in 10 lifetimes. One year in the Holy Ghost. One year. But that one year will never come unless your hand is to the plow. It ain't going to come just because you're sitting around waiting on God. It's because you, it's going to come because you get up and you move in faith. Because you lay hold on these things in God. Because you begin to do them. You will not stop doing them. Go everywhere preaching the gospel. Go everywhere preach. Start going everywhere and preaching the gospel. Huh? Somebody said, how do I do that? Look for people who are sick and need to be healed. Look for, people, look for people who are hurting. That need comfort. Don't sit there and try to tell me your problem. Oh, yeah, you don't look sad. You want to tell me? Because that ain't nothing but human. Don't mistake, don't mistake your human compassion for the Holy Ghost compassion. Don't mistake your ability for God the Holy Ghost ability. Yes, we're talking about you getting filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. We're talking about you getting built up in the faith. We're talking about you being confident that God speaking through your mouth. At any rate, I was laying there in the bed. And I, like never before in my life, I knew Father was standing there. I knew Father was standing there. I'm saying I knew Father was standing there. Not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit, Father. I knew Father was standing there. And I was just overwhelmed with just such comfort. It's just, just I began to talk with him, begin to express things to him as my father. It's who he is to me, what he's done for me. Thanking him for where he's taken me about what about concerning the things that are about to be unleashed. When Father girds his sword upon his side, people are going to be doing more than just sitting around shouting hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. When Father girds his sword upon his side, the masses will be slain. Hallelujah. With the glory of his presence. Hallelujah. And I got up the next morning from that experience and the Lord said, I want you to move into greater faith. I want you to start moving in a new dimension of faith. Because you can get comfortable. I whispered to the Lord, said, I whispered to the Lord one day about this property, this property, the $16 million property. I just whispered to the Lord about it. I just whispered something. I said, Lord, I'm not going to hold you to this. Now, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It's a problem. I'm not going to hold you to this. But if you want me to stay in San Diego, give me that property. Within a month, we had the property. Huh? So when I think about all the calls, and because I've been in so many different places in the world, uh, and, and I'd have, I would have an itinerary built out for a year inside of a couple of days. I mean, everybody wanted me to come to their church, come into their region, come into their place. And the Lord say, go back to San Diego. I want you to go back. And I said, to say, but why, Lord? And nobody listening to me. I mean, if I went with your word, I was supposed to shake the dust off my feet. The Lord would tell me, go back to San Diego. Stand there and just proclaim all those things I put in your mouth. So speak it. Somebody said, oh, we're going to go over there. All we're going to hear is the same thing he's been saying for the past 33 years. Yeah, because I'm going to speak it. And it's going to happen. And everybody in this place that wants to be a part of it, God's ordained that you be a part of it. Whether you be a part of it, now you choose that because there's no predestinated will. He's ordained in his will what he wants you to do, but your will is going to have to be willing to agree with him. I am so glad that Geneva and David are here and that they partners with me together. I'm so glad that you are here. And I want you to become more of a partner in the things of the anointing, not just money, the things of the anointing. I praise God for everybody that is here and for the realms of the anointing that moves in your life. But you got to recognize, if you're sitting in a, in, a, in a living room somewhere and you're talking bad about stuff around here, all you're doing is you effectively giving power to Satan. 
effectively fighting against God. Wouldn't it be terrible standing on the day of judgment and the Spirit of the Lord say, you fought against my move. You fought against what I would have done. It took longer for me to get done what I wanted to do because you fought against it. No way, man. You don't want that. At least the Baptists know, look, don't fight against it because if it's of God, you'll be found fighting against God. And if it's not of God, you know, it'll come to nothing. It's just good old Gamaliel wisdom, right? Rabbi Gamaliel. <laughs> I want you to press down. I want you to get a, I want you to get a heavenly vision. Father wants to bust loose on the other side of your heart, spirit. He wants to come manifest himself. I said, listen to me. Jesus wants to come manifest himself to you. He'll bring you to, he'll doubtless bring you to visions and dreams and revelation. And he'll doubtless work within your life. Every, not every gift of the spirit. All nine gifts of the spirit. Meaning's not over. I don't, there's never a meaning I've come into that I'm not expecting to function in all nine gifts of the spirit. Because whatever's needed in the house, whatever anybody's going to lay hold of. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is here. And it isn't just nine gifts. It's just we categorize it, categorize it that way. Hallelujah. Sita. Ibrus. Mataraki. Write down in the name of Jesus. Any sins that you've committed because you want to be free of them, right now they've removed from off of you. Hallelujah. And the among us say, Hallelujah. Ha ha. Prebekata. Any of those here in this place who have hurt to your hearts, you're hurt, you've been wounded, offended. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed, that the wound and the hurt can no longer have rule over your emotions and your appetites and attitudes. Now, in Jesus' name, I proclaim liberty to anybody who's been imprisoned by anything, imprisoned by failure. Imprisoned by a bad circumstance or situation. I release you right now in Jesus' name. Come out of your prison. Hallelujah. Any threat, any tormented or harassed by the powers of darkness. Right now in Jesus' name. Freed. Freed. To now walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I command you to receive. I command you to receive. I command you to receive. Hallelujah. I command you to receive right now this wonderful work of grace. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive right now say I receive, Lord. I receive, Lord. All the boldness and the confidence. All the boldness and the confidence that a son should have. That a son should have. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You know. Elizabeth and I, we're hooked up in faith to be able to penetrate into the realms of all that is there in the movie industry. Not go in there and assimilate, but be able to go in there and grab a hold of the resources and grab a hold of the skill set to put on movies and put on television. We've had this for a long time. The exploits of David, the exploits of Joshua, the miracles and the signs and wonders of God to just displace. Satan is not greater in power than God, but to look at our society and the culture around us, you would think that he is. He's not. All authority is given to Jesus in heaven and in earth. The Lord's just looking for someone to agree with him. He's looking for someone who can step into the faith and then have a shield of faith that they're able to continue on when they are assailed from right and left and center with every situation that says you cannot move forward. Come on now. Come on now. Get yourself a heavenly vision. I want to see the, come on, get the focus of it. Let us know about what it is that you're doing. We'd like to know what you're doing. So we can hook up with you. So we can understand. So we can speak into that whether or not it really agrees with a heavenly vision and a purpose. We want to see you get on assignment from God from this day forward. We don't want you to wait till next year. 
next month, next week, today. We want you to hear from heaven and get on assignment from heaven, from God. To where at the very center of it, souls are being saved. The power that is in the name of Jesus Christ is being fully revealed and displayed with great signs and wonders and miracles. Where a, a perverse and adulterous world is being rebuked. Hallelujah. Instead of just accommodated. And worse than that, and worse than that, fellowshiped with. People sitting around television screens, fellowshipping with things that were born in hell, that come right out of the, out of the, the being of demon spirits. And all you do as a, as a, as a representative of God is you, get, you open up the gates so that demon spirits can come into the world of men. So more demon spirits can enter in. So more powers of darkness can have authority, mind-blinding spirit. It's the very opposite. It's the very opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. You better watch. Listen, it's time now to change. It's time now to quit agreeing with the world and quit agreeing with doubt. Quit agreeing with lies. Let's stand. Let's stand. Literally and spiritually. <laughs> and having done all the stand, let's not back down. If you don't know where your footing is, if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to be running around like a chicken with his head cut off, which is a terrible sight to see anyway. Where are you going to be moving all over the place? Or you're going to be paralyzed. Have you ever heard of this thing called paralysis by analysis? That's the cow staring at the new gate. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I love the move of God. I love the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I love the tongues of fire. I love the joy. I love the peace. I love the love. Huh? I love the fellowship. I love being beside myself, but it's got to have an outworking. If the outworking is rebellion against authority, don't go back to that meeting. Don't participate with that whatever it was. You hear me? The move of God in our life produces within us a hunger that Father's will will be done through us. This, that's what the move of God, the move of God works within us, a surrender to say, Lord, okay, from here on out, you take control now. You take control now. In Jesus' name. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. Receive right now. Receive. Right now. Receive. Receive. Ha ha. Rebosite. Receive right now. Receive right now the fire of the Holy Spirit that works within you the very will of the Father, the authority of the Father, the confidence of the Holy Ghost, the boldness of the Holy Ghost, His divine assurance. Hallelujah. Nangambro, that redefines. Hallelujah. Redefine. Father has been so patient with me. I think that I was, I, I think I'm one of the most. I think I'm one of the people that he has had to have the most patience with. I'm on the list of those who were category needing most patience. He will, I'm telling you right now, he will perfect everything concerns you, but you're going to have to get into the program like never before, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the sea at that, and I'm a say, I tell you, Kiel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bruva sit at any messy bottle, not a maki issue. Thank you, Jesus. Bombere may not she but cool a man deprede. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and receive. Hallelujah. Mang le se bera man de for a day. Ivra mando se prave. Just go ahead and yield yourself to him. Go ahead and yield yourself to him. 
You know how easy it is to be born again? You know how easy it is to be born again? Let me tell you how easy it is to be born again. To be born of the Spirit. To be born of, and begotten of God. All I have to do is ask Him. <laughs> all I have to do is say, I want to be born again. I want to be your servant. I want to be one of your people. I want you to be my God. And we just call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. We say, Lord Jesus. All you have to do today, if you don't know Him, if you've never turned your life over to Him, if you've not received a new heart and a new spirit, if you've not been born of heaven, if the Holy Ghost has never come upon you and made you a new creation, all you have to do is just call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Say, Jesus, come deliver me. Come save me. Come save me from a world and a life that I've lived. I want to I want to live in, the, in, in, your, in your kingdom. I want to live in the place where you live. I want to be taught your ways. I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on this world. To come and follow you, Holy Spirit. To come be taught by you, living God. We just simply say, Lord Jesus, come rescue me. And he comes. Come save me. Come deliver me. And he comes. Come make me a new creation. Come make me a new creature. Come make me alive in you. And he does. How easy is that? How easy is that? How easy is that? How easy is that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is it going to cost you to make a stand in the kingdom of God? Yeah, it is going to cost you. Those who sit in darkness, light has sprung up. And they've seen the light because Jesus is the light that lights up every man that comes in this world. But there are many men who love darkness rather than light because they love sin. But is that going to, is that going to supposed to be a reason why we stop proclaiming this good news and inviting all men to come for God would that all men would be saved? I, do, I see right now the Lord putting the anointing to reach the lost, to reach souls upon people who've never reached very many, and some who are. Some, some of the, you that are soul winners, you, be, you just have an anointing to reach the lost. Because this is what it's all about. When it comes, when it comes, when you move just beyond, or just when the outworking of relationship begins to be seen, the first thing that is seen and manifest in the outwork of relationship is souls coming into the kingdom with very little effort. It's not, it's with very little effort, just you being, because relationship lights you up. Hallelujah. Relationship just makes you who you are in God. It ain't forced, it ain't awkward, it ain't weird, it ain't, huh? When people are awkward and weird and all that about it, I mean, it's because too much influence, the enemy still ain't able to stop them. Hinder them. We'll get you. We're gonna get you equipped. Equipped with the shield of faith. Amen. Get you cold aside. Labadaya. Hallelujah. Gonna get you equipped with the ability to stand against all the wiles, all the tricks of Satan. Amen. Hallelujah. God's gonna teach you how to make sober, godly choices. How to refuse the evil and choose the good. How to love righteousness and hate iniquity. How to walk in the fear of the Lord all the days of your life. And always have Him before you and make Him your fear and your dread. Hallelujah. Hold aside. The presence of the Lord is here in such a wonderful and glorious way. There's no one who should leave here with sickness or disease. There's no one who should leave here under the bondage of demon spirits. A slave and a prisoner to to live out Satan's will. 
But there are people who choose to. They just they want to be a servant of Satan. They, they've been so deceived. One moment after you die and you find yourself in a place called hell where the flame never goes out, where the fire never goes out, and where the soul never dies, you'll repent. Because deception won't have a hold of you anymore. Satan's purpose of deception, of how he's lied to people and tricked people, doesn't even, it's not needed anymore. Reality sets in one second after you're there, one moment after you're there. Today, the liberating love of God, the truth-giving Holy Ghost is here to liberate you from deception so you will not any long, no longer live your life under the influence of the powers of darkness. I break the power of the occult right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the power of the influence of every satanic thing. We see a rise of satanism. There's a Luciferian cult that's been in existence a long time since Adam disobeyed. But now we see the rise in the popularity of it. It's like children's programs. It's like the Christian community. It's like God's Holy Ghost people in one of the most effective areas of ministry aren't even there. Children's programs that capture little kids one after the others. Witchcraft, sorcery, all kinds of the occult. New age stuff. And it's just, and it's done with very, very talented people and it's captivating. And you can say, oh, well, we're just going to isolate our kids and we're going to go out over here and we're going to live in the cave until Jesus comes. And we're going to let everybody else just have to deal with it. Not me. Not Jesus. Not God, the Holy Ghost. Hey, you go live in the cave. He's going to be there with you. He'll love you, but he, he's going to be busy. He's going to be busy getting out there, <laughs> touching the people, delivering the innocent. Huh? One of Job's things of, of his uprightness is he put forth his hand to deliver the innocent from those who would destroy them. Come on now. Somehow. I don't know how. Other than by the power and the strength of the Lord. I just got a vision of it. So what do I do? I prophesy to it. And I don't stop prophesying. I went down the road 20 years ago screaming at Warner Brothers uh, Studio and, and all those other studios. In the name of Jesus, I command you to give over to the kingdom of God. And I am not stopped. Somebody said, you know, you crazy man. Uh, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm another kingdom man. Hallelujah. I don't live in the kingdom of this world. I'm, I'm here to take over these, these things that Satan has fortified. He's fortified the financial realm against God's people. By and large, he fights every day. How many people are even in the fight? There are very few people in the fight that are pressing in for wealth, be dissatisfied with whatever they can just pocket and, you know, give me a break. Where are the valiant men? Telling a preacher last night, come on, where are the valiant men? Where are the people that are going to get in this thing? The, a man of God is pressed into this realm, and he said, listen, you know, this is scary. You know, this is going to risk everything. Risk it. So the finger on. But come on, man, let's get into this thing. Let's get into this thing. Let's get into this thing. I'm in it. I'm in it. Why don't you get in it? Why don't we preach the gospel in every possible way? Why don't we live, breathe, eat, drink? Seeing breakthroughs in this realm. Exploring it with God. Crying out to God night and day. Father, here we are. Father, use us. Lord, show us how to break through into this realm of finances. Show us how to break in, through into the, into the kingdom of the media. The kingdom of the media is owned by Satan. The kingdom of finance is by and large owned by Satan. He has no right. Not if somebody has got a hold of authority. But you can, you can sit around and you can pray all day. But until you get a move up and start moving and, 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 and something and start doing it and putting your hand to the plow, there's no possibility of breakthrough or change. Uh -huh. One of the places that we start is we, just, we start with tithe and offering we say lord i'm going to hook up with a miracle for multiplication i'm hope up, i'm gonna hook up with a miracle 
that the things that you've given me, that you will bless them and multiply them. It did not take Job long, very long, huh, to see his beginning was small, but his latter end was great. Come on. Just a cooperating with God, the Holy Ghost. Fine, let's, let's, let's let God, the Holy Spirit, discover for us where we're holding back, where we're still moved in doubt, where we're still limited and confined by what we believe and by what circumstances dictates to us and what the rules of finances says it has to be and the way the program works, devised and designed by Satan. Come on, let's break free of this thing. This is a prayer meeting right here. This is a surrender meeting here. Huh? I'm moving. I want to move with you. I want you to move with me. I want us to move together with the Holy Ghost. We're saying, Holy Spirit, take control. Take complete control. I picked out the site for the church that we're going to have out at the MTC. Daniel and I did. Three days ago. Beautiful site, man. I want it filled with, I want it filled with leaders from all over the world. Somebody said, what are you going to do about the region? Well, well, we got a little church over there in Bly. We've already planted it. We've got Brad and Margaret um, milling, milling, overseeing it. We, we, we put, we're going to put a church up. We're going we're gonna to see people come in from all over the world. We, we're going to take, we're going to advance this thing on every side, on every. Somebody said, can't you just focus on one thing? No. Why should I? Why should I focus on one thing? God's focused on everything. Why can't I focus with Him? Amen. My, I got a good focus. I got very laser focused. Everything. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Parasitaya. Somebody said you need more people. You need to go around and summons more people. No, I, I need you to summons more faith. Oh, you need to get more doors open for you. No, I got the door. Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Huh. You, need, you need more influence. I got all the influence I need. Father, amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. When people begin to hook up in faith, when people begin to agree together for one purpose, I mean, agree more than just saying, hey, I'm with you, brother. I pray God give you the strength of 10 oxen. That ain't really agreeing. You with me? You're one of them oxen. I mean, hooked up in faith. We're saying, okay, we in this thing. We're in it. Everything. We're in it. Our words coming out of our mouth in it. Our affections of our heart in it. The labor of our hand in it. The resources that God's given us in it. Oh, Rabositi Yatanani Pekisha. It's still, you know, it's everything that God has us to do. You know what? We can't even imagine it. We can't put it together. It won't fit into a nice little neat step by step it doesn't you just speak it out you dream it because you see it if you see it, all you gotta do is I mean, help you see it see understand this you see three billion people who's never heard the gospel and then you begin to imagine in god have a vision in god of how to begin to reach them and whatever you do is going to prosper <laughs> you 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 begin to see with me san diego and how it's been imprisoned by religion. And it's not seeing the, seeing the power and the glory of God. And then you begin to move into a place and press into a place for signs, wonder, and miracles. For a greater demonstration of the power of God in your life. See, this is how it happens. This is the way it's effective. It's not just effective because we sit back and we see it and we want to see something change. we got to engage. When, the more we see it, the more passionately we engage. And then there comes... A, a, a remedy. We don't see how all the things fit, fit together, but then there comes a remedy. There comes a, a glorious revival, great move of God. Brother Yun would be here uh, on next Sunday. I'm, I'm believing God. I'm going to talk to the folks. I'm going to say, listen, I, I want Brother Yun to come when he can do a meeting like he wants to do a meeting. When Brother Yun gets to do a meeting like he wants to do a meeting, eight hours later, everybody's kneeling for the tenth time or something like that. Huh? Because he prays, and then he goes back. He's, every time, he, after the prayer, the anointing goes to another level. It's true with him. He, all the people let him do, all the people have been letting him do is just give an introduction of who he is in America. Because that's not the way he ministers. He ministers, then he get everybody, and then get everybody praying, and he lays hands on everybody, then he starts preaching again. 
anointing just went up another level. Then he does that again, you know, gets everybody praying, lays hands on everybody, got everybody laying hands on everybody, and then he preaches again. Anointing is another level. It's beautiful. Those are things we're sowing into. I'm sowing into them. Not sit around and everybody say, oh, Brother Gideon's coming to our meeting. He's coming to our church. It's not about that. It's about a heavenly vision getting imparted, a change taking place, a passion being ignited in your spirit. Pat, Shots Line is going to be here in, what is Pat? Going to be here in June. And, he, and he's launching from here in San Diego. He just feels God has got something so great for San Diego. And he's, and he's going to be launching this new thing that he's doing. I can't remember what it is. The Unqualified. Sitaramase. Tokaneya. Hallelujah. I just heard a yes. Hallelujah. Takaneya si potonanai. Lana motana. Yes, Lord. Okay. Okay. You ready? Charge. That's it. In your spirit, you'll charge. You say, total abandonment, don't care what it costs me. In fact, I'm gaining far more than I spend. Huh? I'm going to get far more than I give. Right now, we just... Well, the past two weeks, we've been finishing up the program that we have. It's an advanced program for animal husbandry that we're going to use in the nations of the world. that will get us into Kashmir or get us into North Korea tomorrow. We'll be finishing up this week. The program will be fully set in place, documented. Training, the, the training process already implemented. JJ and, and Nicole and their two children just went to start working on getting our greenhouse finalized so that horticulture gets up and going. We're going to do tissue culture. It's going to go to the nations of the earth. It's going to get us into places that we would not be able to get in otherwise. Hallelujah. Because nations are nations want it. They they need food supplies. God's going to allow us to be able to impact orphanages and influence orphanages all over Asia and the Middle East through the things that we're doing that we're passionately pursuing. With you know on the on the back side of the horticulture is also the aquaculture. We par have most of the program. Well, by and large. 99% of the aquaculture program is already completed. We've finished it. We've worked two and a half years on it. And we've got it all documented. We've got it all laid out. And about eight, uh, three ring binders. And it's, a tr it's, it's very easy to train people in it. It's cutting edge stuff. It's not something that was 20 years ago. It's today. <laughs> got to get us into places that we couldn't go before we're reaching in right now believe in God to give us the right as soon as we get everything all set up and I'm, and I'm pr praying by the end of July at the latest August we've got everything all set up we're going to be looking for um, academics some kind of an academic group whether it's actually the University of Oregon or however it works to give us some certification to help us understand the certification process, working with the, the government in terms of grants to be able to bring people in from poor third world countries because the United States of America has a substantial amount of money for that. And we're going to target missionaries, preachers. Oh. It's bigger than I could even tell you and describe to you. Somebody said, can't you break it down more? No. Let me tell you like this. The end product is 3 billion people coming into the kingdom. Does that break it down for you enough? And all we're going to use is a tool. We've got a tool. This is one area of a tool to train up missionaries. We're, we're, we're going to be planning this week in a greater way. And... Uh, um, in terms of how we're going to implement more specifically sowing uh, the seeds of mission in the youth seeds of missions in the youth so and, and what does that mean it just bringing kids in from this church and other churches and 
casting a vision for the mission field, sowing seeds to be a missionary and into their spirit, how they can do it, what does it look like? Huh. We're believing God that that will grow to, you know, no limits. I mean, we, 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 we believe we could see 10,000 young people from across the United States of America come to the missions camp. One week at a time for one week, period of one week, some s s programs two weeks to go back to their church for, for, the, rest of their, for the rest of their life, burning with a, a vision for missions. If they don't go to the missions, connected with missions because of what we sow into them, because of the program that we started developing last year. It's radical. We're taking it to another level. It's going to be more passionate. It's going to be more intense. It's going to be more Holy Ghost. They're, they're, God has... God, the Holy Spirit, has, has hooked us up with uh, people that are involved in missions, involved in raising up youth ministries, and, you know, all the connectivity of it, and we're just going to keep running with it, and we're just going to, it's going to keep enlarging, and it's going to keep getting bigger, and it's all about three billion people we've never heard. Somebody said, don't you have to have more people to do this? No, just have to have God. You have to have the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us labor for the Master from the dawn to the setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. And when our life is over and this work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, hallelujah, I'll be there. Hallelujah. What a song, eh? What a song. What a song. What a song. I know we just spread so thin. I mean, I know the Lord wants us to be back in China. There's things we've got to do in China. I was just up in the night last night, just almost grieving for Nepal, for southern Nepal. I've got several ministries from India asking me to come right now. I mean, there's so many open doors. Who will go? Good, I'll just send you because I don't have time to go. I, I, I major ministries in India saying for now for the past five years please come please come please come I keep saying I, I can't I can't I can't I can't I can't I'm too busy the Lord won't release me for what I'm doing the Lord's going to take you he's going to break you and he's going to multiply you and feed the people the nations He's going to take you, he's going to break you, he's going to multiply you. He's going to feed the nations. He's going to take you, he's going to break you, he's going to multiply you. He's going to feed the nations. He's going to take you, he's going to break you, he's going to multiply you. <laughs> <laughs> David said to me, David Nikkei said to me, the Lord's just been using David and Heather. He said, you know, he said, when I was 17 years old, I gave myself to learning your songs. And he said, I'm just so blessed because I see that, that anointing in my life. He said, what I did was I decided to go ahead and start memorizing your sermons. Huh? Well, he said 17 to me. He said seven to me. Geneva says he's mom. She's mom. She knows. She's 12 years old. But he, you know, he's, he was, he didn't have it all right. Okay. He's like, for only to abide, he was saying, only take a bite. So he, he messed up on the words, you know, only to abide. He thought it was only took a bite. So, but by 17 years, he says, okay, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to give myself to memorizing your, the sermon. Well, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get somewhere. I guarantee you. I don't care. If, 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 you know, if Elmer Thud was anointed of God, I and mean, you know what, huh? And you started memorizing Elmer Thud's sermons, I'm telling you right now, you'll step into an anointing of God. It would be greater than Elmer Thud. You know, it's not, sometimes I think that people just get locked in certain things and over realms of thinking that you want to get unlocked in. It's about, huh, see, it's about Elisha saying to Elijah, I want something more than you can give. But I recognize I'm not going to get it unless I'm serving you. 
and decided, no, I'm not going to get it unless I'm pressing in where you're at, okay? I want double what you got, so that's something more than what he could give. Are you listening to me? The Lord brought you into this place to press in to what he has supplied here. He has. It's here. Obviously, you're here for that reason. And we want you to just take full advantage of it. I'm just so, I'm so blessed. Dave and Heather, they, uh, they're getting ready to come back. They're coming back at the end of this month. And, um, and what they did was they went out there and discovered how much anointing was on the inside of them. Yay? Huh? I mean, everywhere Kelly's going. Father's doing miracles. Doing with the miracle of his presence. And it's going to be greater because no one's going to steal your confidence. Because in the mind of the Father, you are as his son. In the mind of the Father, the same ministry that Jesus has is yours. In the mind of men, they will categorize you and they will place you in different, well, he's able to get in these churches that are, you know, two, three hundred or twenty or thirty. He's got this and that. And his altar calls have his... And it's the same for everyone who will step out and begin to move. Not everyone necessarily has an anointing by the Holy Spirit to stand in the pulpit and preach. Not everyone. But you have been given an anointing to go and reach the lost, to go cast out devils. You've been given anointing to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You've been given anointing to behave yourself. Yes, you have. To quit having a bad attitude. Some people, the greatest challenge that right now, the greatest kingdom that they've got to subdue is their own lives. Huh? Because listen, the Lord spoke to me on the way here. I'll let you go in a minute. Maybe. Of course, the doors are open. You can leave any more time you want. But you know, the, God brought Israel into their inheritance, but they didn't know how to live in it. God brought, I'm going to say again, Father spoke to me this morning and said this. I said, Father, I know that's not what you want me to preach on. But I, I know I have to deliver it. God brought Israel into their inheritance, but they didn't know how to live in it. He gave them all the authority and the anointing and the ability they needed to run out everything that was opposed to his will and all the things that would lead them astray. But they were unwilling to move in it. Some of you, the greatest power that you're having to deal with right now aren't demon spirits. It's accusations and failures and fear in your own life. It's a sense of living in the past rather than pressing into the future in God. It's being overcome with what you haven't done instead of being seized by what God's called you to do. Huh? Come on now. You got to leave in those things which are behind, behind. Forsake them. Uh -huh. There's some people I want to pray for here this morning. If you want me to pray for you, I want you to come because the Lord's been talking to you, dealing with your spirit. I'm talking, I want you to come because there's some things that have been holding you back and hindering you and stopping you. And I want that thing to be broken off of you. Now, listen, it's going to be broken. We're going to break it in Jesus' name. We're going to come at it. We're going to command it to go. And you've got to be equipped now to, to not allow it. It's good. When it comes to try to work in your mind, when it comes to try to work against you, huh. you've got to recognize for, for what it is. It's a hindering power of darkness, and the Lord wants you to take His Word, His spoken Word, which is the sword of the Spirit, and cut its head off. Okay? Quit just stabbing at it. Okay? <laughs> cut its head off. In Jesus' name, cut its head off. Father, we thank you for the anointing. 